Granny Zabner, I believe that's our ring. I know his lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lum and Abner. And now? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Cedric finally managed to adopt a philosophic attitude toward his lost love, Clarabelle Seastrunk. But Abner, in helping Cedric arrive at this point of view, got himself into the doghouse with his wife, Elizabeth. As we look in on the little community today, we find the old fellows in the Jotham Down store and library, and Abner is telling his woes to Lum. Listen. She wouldn't hardly talk to you, huh? No, sir. Every time I'd ask Elizabeth a question at breakfast this morning, Lum, why she'd just look the other way or else talk her, start talking to little Pearl. She talked to me through Pearl all the time, is what she done at breakfast. Talk to you through Pearl? Yeah. She wouldn't talk to me, you know. She'd say to the Pearl, say, ask Mr. Peabody if he'd care for another biscuit and ask your pa if he wants another egg and all such as that. Me well, little Pearl asked me, you know. Well, exactly how did all this start, Abner? What's Elizabeth so upset about? Boy, well, there ain't nothing for her to be upset about, Mom. Well, it is not actual. You see, here's what started the whole thing. You know, the other day I heard that Elizabeth was helping Ms. Barton make a wedding dress for Mildred. That's Ms. Barton's daughter, you know. She's going to get married. Yeah, I heard about that. Her and the oldest Macmillan boy. Yeah. Well, it's in the Army. Yeah, yeah, that's all. Well, anyway, I heard that Elizabeth was going to sew on a train, and natural, I thought... And you thought she was going to get on a railroad train and do the sewing? Well, how do you know that? <laughs> well, after trying to explain things to you for the last 190 years, it ain't hard to figure that out. Ain't, huh? Anybody else in this world would have known that she meant the train of Mildred's wedding dress. Well, I never knowed it. And so, natural, I got sort of mad at Elizabeth for traipsing around the country on a train. Or, at least, ways, that's what I thought she was going to do. And, well, one thing led to another, and I wound up and not going home for supper that night. Went home with Cedric instead. They had over at their place. Well, what in the world did you do that for? Oh, I don't know. I reckon it was mostly that I just wanted to show Cedric how to handle women folk. For goodness sake, you're a fine one to be trying to learn Cedric a thing like that. Huh? Looks like you ain't learned it yourself yet. And after all these years, too. Well, now, I never had no trouble before. Now you can see why I've stayed single all these years. You don't ever hear me having no trouble with no women. No. Just go through life my own sweet way, easy and comfort, and just paddle my own canoe down the river of life. (laughs) Paddle your own canoe? Yeah. Granny, that sounds sort of poetic the way I said it, didn't it? Well, when did you get a canoe, Lum? Now, wait a minute, Abner. Let's not get into that. I don't mean I actually got a canoe. Oh, uh, what was... is it, a rowboat? Oh, for goodness sakes. Well, who you fixing to take for a boat ride, Miss Frederick? Oh, I thought you said you never had nothing to do with women. Well, I don't. That's what I meant when I said I paddled my own canoe. Well, if you're going to do the paddling yourself, Lum, it must be a woman you're taking along in. Because if it's me, why, you'd make me do the rowing. You always do, and you know it. Well, you don't have to worry about who's going to do the rowing this time, because I ain't taking Miss Fredericks or no other woman for a boat ride. You ain't? Of course not. Well, uh, who, who are you taking, then? I ain't taking nobody. Not nobody at all? No, not a soul. Well, <laughs> I dog it. I'll tell you what I'll do then, Lum. I'll go with you. Now, wait a minute. Yes, I will. I'll do it. I'll be proud to do it, Lum. Now, there ain't no sense of you rowing around that mill pond all by yourself. That ain't no fun, and you know it. Well, I never said it was fun. Why, of course it ain't. <laughs> you, you wanted me to go all the time, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. Well, we, we'll take some fishing tack along and do some fishing, too. <laughs> well, Abner, sometimes I don't see how you do it. Oh, well, it ain't hard to do. See, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll run across the street there to Dick Huddleston's and borrow his fishing tackle, and then we can close up the store sort of early tonight, get an early start, you know, and get out there about the shank of the evening when they're biting the best. And, er, wait a minute, wait a minute, I better make a phone call here first. Phone call? Yeah, yeah, I'll phone right now. Well, just a minute here, who are you calling? Hey, recollect that time at Cedric and Mr. Barton went fishing about a week ago, Lon. They said the fish was biting something wonderful out there. Hello? Is that you, Pearl? Well, listen, honey. 
Uh, tell your mama that I won't be home for supper tonight. No. Alum's got a new boat and we're going fishing in it. Oh, for goodness sake. Yeah, that's right. Oh, no, no, she needn't to wait supper. More than likely won't get home till late, tell her. All right, honey. Goodbye. <laughs> for goodness sakes. What'd you go and do a thing like that for, Abner? Huh? Well, look at all the trouble you got yourself into for not going home for supper the other night. Oh, well, maybe this will make Elizabeth sorrowful for treating me the way she's been doing. This might just learn her a lesson not to go around not speaking to me, you know it? Well, it won't work out that way, Abner, I can tell you that. Women ain't like that. Ain't, huh? You're just asking for more trouble, that's all you're doing. Now, you just better call Elizabeth up and explain the whole thing to her and tell... Uh-oh. Hello, Mousy. Well, hello, Lum. Abner. Yeah, honey, Mousy. Call her up, Abner, and tell I've her I've got that some you... dandy new greeting cards written up here, Lum. Oh, they're just dandy. Uh-huh, well, that's fine. Go on now, Abner. Call her up and yes, tell sir, her... Yes, sir, they're that... sure dandies. That's what they are. They're dandies. Mousy, quit interrupting me. Can't you see I'm talking to Abner? Yes, sir. Well, here, I better get on over to Dick's and get that fishing tackle before it's too late. I'll be back quick as I can. Now, wait a minute, Abner. Come back here. I won't be going long. Here, you better start packing up a lot. Abner, now. come back here. One, two, good. Well, are you and Abner going fishing, Lum? Well, Abner thinks we are, but we ain't. That feller's got an imagination that outcaps anything I've ever seen in my whole life. Yes, sir. I'm feared it's going to get him in a lot of trouble with his woman this time. Oh, is he having trouble with his wife? Yeah, Elizabeth won't hardly speak to him, he says. Well, you know, sometimes Gussie gets that way. She won't speak to me for a whole day at a time. She won't? Huh? No, sir. Well, what do you do to try to get her over it? Well, <laughs> nothing. You see, those are the days that I enjoy most, Lon. Enjoy? Yes, sir. That's the only time that I can get any work done. You know, Gussie's a wonderful woman and all, Lon, but sometimes... Oh, no, I better not tell you, I guess. Better not tell what? Well, sometimes when she's been talking all day long, I just get to where I feel like saying, Oh, Gussie, shut your big fat mouth. Why, Mousy Gray, you oughtn't to say a thing like that. Well, I don't say it out loud, Lum, but I must confess I do think it sometimes. Well, I reckon you ought to even think it, Mousy. Of course, I can sort of understand how you feel. Now, why do women talk all the time, Lum? I don't know, Mousy. I reckon I'm the only fellow around here that comes anywhere near to understand them, and i got to admit, sometimes they even baffle me a little, I think. Well, how come that you understand them so well, Lon? Oh, I reckon it's on account I'm a bachelor, and I can just sit back and observe married folks and sort of analyze situations. See, I'm a sort of the philosopher type, I believe. Oh, gee, that must be wonderful. Oh, it ain't so great. Leastways, I don't think so myself. Others might think it is, of course. Yes, sir. Now, you take this trouble Abner's having. They ain't actual nothing to it. All he's got to do is call up Elizabeth and tell her he's sorry and that he ain't actual going on no fishing trip and everything will be all patched up. Well, why doesn't he do that, then? Well, he's too stubborn, that's why. Wait a minute, maybe I ought to do it for him. Well, that seems like the friendly thing to do. Yeah, it does, don't it? Yes, sir. I never thought about that. I'll never in the world be able to talk Abner into doing it himself. So mm -hmm. the next best thing is for me to do it. Yes, sir. Yeah, I better do it before he gets back to Yes. Now, this is the time that friendship counts. Friend in need is a friend indeed. I've always said that. Yes, sir. All you need in these things is a little common bay horse. Uh, hello? Is that you, Elizabeth? Oh, uh, Sister Sampson, what you doing over there, visiting? Well, could I speak to Elizabeth? In the kitchen, huh? Uh, no, 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 never mind. Don't call her. Just give her this message. Abner told her a while ago he's going fishing tonight, but he ain't actually going fishing. No, Mom. Yes, Mom, you tell her that. All right, goodbye. Well, that was easy, Lon. Well, sure, nothing to it. Just have to use your head, that's all. It's funny how just some little thing can straighten out some trouble that way, but how few folks ever bother to do just that one little thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> 
I bound you that'll make Lisa Beth so happy. She'll more likely call Abner right up and tell him she's sorrowful for not speaking to him today. Uh-huh. Everything will be fine and dandy. Yes, it sure is a wonderful world, isn't it, Pa? Uh-huh. <laughs> I recollect one time Aunt Charity and Grandpappy Steers had a little squabble. Hey, Lomi, look there. Look at all the fishing tackle at Dick Lomi. Hey, look at these here poles here. Did you ever see anything as pretty before in your whole life? <laughs> well, well, you have to add me a test. Oh, they're dandy. Might just as well turn right around. Have you got the lunch packed up yet? No. Oh, well, here, you better get at it then. Let's see now. We ought to have some crackers and some cheese and Wait a minute, and... There's a couple of things i got to explain to you. Yeah, well, you can explain them when we're out in the boat run. we got to get started. Uh, what kind of pickles do you like best, dill or sweet? Uh, uh, ain't or... that our ring, Abner? Yeah, yeah, I believe it Well, you better get yeah, it. I'll get it. Uh, you get to work on that lunch. Hurry up now, Long. Hurry up now. Hello, John and Down Store and Library. Abner Peabody doing the talking. Oh, hello, Elizabeth. See what I tell you, Mousy. <laughs> huh? You told him already. Not going fishing? Listen to this, Mousy. Why, of course I'm going fishing. Who'd you hear that from? Well, now, what does Sister Simpson know about it? No, honest, I'm going fishing. Elizabeth, I ain't trying to cover up for something else I'm doing. Oh, boy, I don't know if that's going to work out very well. But I am going fishing. Now, don't believe that old gossip. I ain't no such a thing, Elizabeth. I'm going fishing. Now, Elizabeth, honey, don't start crying. Elizabeth? Liz- Hello? 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 <laughs> that blame that Sister Simpson. Now, I reckon where she could have got a hold of such a idea like that. Well, Abner, just a little bit of go uh, along. Up, uh, well, hurry up, Abner. If we're going fishing, we better get going. And we better bring back a lot of fish, too, I can tell you. I believe that's our ring. I dog his llama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot him down, store. This is Lumen Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum's efforts to straighten out Abner's misunderstanding with Elizabeth only served to make things worse. His phone call to tell Elizabeth that Abner was not going on a fishing trip was received by Sister Simpson, who misinterpreted it to mean that Abner had only told his wife he was going fishing in order to cover up some suspicious plans he'd formulated. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum back in the feed room working on greeting cards, while Abner... He's in the Jotham Down store telling his troubles to Grandpappy Spears. Listen. Well, I don't know, Grandpap. I just can't understand it. All I know is that yesterday we was going fishing. And... Who, who was you? You and Elizabeth? No, me and Lum. Or at least ways I thought we was. And Lum said something about paddling his own canoe, and I figured he meant he wanted to go fishing. Natural, natural. So I called up the place and said I wouldn't be home for supper on account of going fishing, and then I went over to Dick Huddleston's to get some tackle and stuff, and when I got back to the store, why, Elizabeth called up. And and... told you not to go fishing, huh? No, no, she was all upset because she heard I weren't going. It seems that Sister Simpson gave her some story about me just saying I was going fishing, but that actually I was going to do something else. Oh, something else? Yeah, something that I never wanted Elizabeth to know about. Oh, you mean like you going over to see some other woman or something like that? I reckon that's what she figured. Oh, sassy fresh. What woman would ever give you a second look, Abner? Or a first look, as far as that goes? Well, that's what I tried to tell Elizabeth, but... You know, a woman gets to crying and feeling sorrowful for herself why there just ain't no reasoning with her. No, no, you're right, Abner, they ain't. Uh, well, where'd Sister Simpson get this idea in her head? Well, she was over visiting Elizabeth yesterday afternoon, and she claimed she answered the phone, and a man's voice told her that I weren't actually going fishing. A man's voice? Yeah. Didn't she know who it was? She claims not. Well, I can understand that. 
she never gives a fellow enough time to get three words in edgeways so she can recognize who she is talking to. Yeah, that blame it all anyway. Well, what final happened? Did you or didn't you go fishing? Why, no, I never went. I went right home, tried to cheer Elizabeth up and explain things to her, but it just seemed like the more I tried to explain, why the worse things got. Oh, no. no. Talking ain't no use at a time like this. No. Well, what you got to do is get Elizabeth a nice present of some kind. Present? Yeah, that's what I always used to do with Charity again. She'd get upset over some little no count something. Well, what kind of presents you reckon I ought to give her? Oh, I don't know. Something she likes. Let's see what would be good. I don't know. I give her a chopping axe and a cook stove for Christmas. Give her some new plow handle this spring. Don't Wait know. a minute. She likes cats, don't she? Cats. Yeah, little kittens. Oh, oh. I, I know where you get one. It's as cute as a cub bear. Well, yeah, Elizabeth just loves cats. I won't never let her keep them around the place, so I don't care for them myself. Well, in that case, that's exactly the thing for you to get her, then. How? Uh, That'll show right there how much you think, Elizabeth. Here you are, giving her something you never would let her have before. All right, doggie, that's right, in. Yes, sir, I believe you got an idea there, Grandpa. <laughs> that more likely just tickle her too bad. Why, of course it would. Of course it would. Well, whereabouts did you say I could get a little kitten? Over to Master's. Oh. It's a little black one with a white spot on its forehead. Well. She does anything. <laughs> you call it Annabelle, I believe. Annabelle? Yeah. Well, uh, do you reckon that Grandma Master will sell it to me? Oh, she'll give it to you. She wants to get shut of it. She does, huh? Yeah, she's got more cats over and she can take care of anyway. Well. If I was you, I'd go right over and get it, Abby. All right, doggy, that's just what I'm going to do right now. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, say, would you sort of watch the store for me for a few minutes, Grandpa? Well, I've got to be getting over to the place, Abby. Well, I hear you've got to help me with this. Now, I won't be gone but just a little bit. Well, I'll hurry. Hey, hurry up, then. Yeah, I will, I will. Uh, Lum's back there in the feed room. If you need him for anything, he's working on his greeting cards back there. Yeah, all right, Abner. And get the phone there. That's all ring, I believe. I'll be back with it if I can. Yeah, all right. Hello, John. I'm down store and library. Milford Spears on the phone here. No, I said this was Milford Spears. Lum's back in the feed room, and Abner's went over to get Annabelle. Mom? Annabelle ain't a who, it's a dog, I mean a cat. Why, it is too. Now listen here, I know a cat when I see one. Wait a minute, who am I talking to here? Sister Simpson. Well, why didn't you say so? Goodbye. All right, Jimmy, that's one woman I refuse to talk to on the telephone. Hey, Lum! Lum, come here! Yeah, what is it, Grandpa? I wish you'd watch the store. I got to get on over the place. Charity's waiting for me. I order went a long time ago. Well, run along, Grandpa. You don't need to stay here. Abner can take care of it. Or wait a minute. Whereabouts is Abner at? Oh, he went over to the master's place for a minute. He'll be back directly. Oh, well, you can go on home if you want to. I'll keep an eye on everything. Yeah. All right, then, Mom. I'll see you later. So long. Yeah, so long, Grandpa. See you later. Hello, jot them down, store and library. L. Edwards, president of the Edwards and Gray Publishing Company. Greeting cards for every occasion speaking. Mom? Oh, Sister Simpson. I granny, you're just the one I want to talk to. What was the idea of telling Elizabeth that Abner was... Well, 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 give me a chance to talk. Listen, Sister Simpson, I was the one that called... Let me talk just a second, please. Huh? Cat named Annabelle. No, I ain't got one, and neither is Abner. Why? Then it must be a what? A woman? What are you talking about? Why, that's ridiculous. Oh, hello, Lom. Oh, excuse me. Listen here, Sister Simpson. If you don't stop making up stories, making up story, making up... Uh, listen. Well, I got to hang up. A customer just come in. Goodbye. Well, I'm not a customer, Lum. I'm a partner in your publishing company. Yeah, I know that, Mousy. Yeah, I just had to use that for excuse to hang up. Yes, sir. Granny, someday that woman's tongue's going to rattle itself clean out of her head, I believe. Yes, sir. She even talks more than Gussie, I believe. And the worst part of it is, with Sister Simpson, every time she opens her mouth, she gets somebody in trouble. You mean Abner? Yeah. Now she's got it to where he's going with a woman named Annabelle. Annabelle? Yeah, do you know anybody named Annabelle? Yes, sir. Uh, Annabelle May Watts. 
I used to know her back in Iowa, Lum. Well, I mean somebody around here by that name. She was a pretty girl, Lum. That is, after you got used to her. She didn't have a very good personality, but she had nice broad shoulders. Well, I ain't interested in what she looked like now, see. She had sort of buck teeth, too, but you didn't notice them when she wasn't talking, and she hardly ever talked. You know, the last time I heard from Mama, why, she said Annabelle had left town to join a softball team. Well, that's nice, but that ain't helping us any, or helping Abner, I mean. Yes, sir. And is with the way things stand twixt Abner and his woman, when Sister Simpson calls up Elizabeth and starts telling her this story about Annabelle, Abner might just as well move up in the mountains and hermit himself. Well, will Sister Simpson tell Elizabeth about that? Will she tell her? Well, she'll go over there and draw pictures of it. She'll shout it from the housetop. If she could drive a horror plane, I granny, she'd go up in the air and write it with skywriting. Oh, gee. Where, where could she have gotten such an idea along? I don't know. With an imagination like that woman's got, there ain't no telling what... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What's the matter, Long? Granny's, I wonder if that could be it. Wonder if what could be what? Annabelle Kearney. She used to live in Pine Ridge a long time ago, and she was sort of sweet on Abner. Yes. That was long before ever he went with Elizabeth. Well, did Abner like her? No, no. Couldn't stand her hardly. Uh Uh-huh. After Abner got married, she moved away to Oklahoma, but she comes back to Pine Ridge every three or four years for a visit. Yes. Sir. And I'll bound you, she's visiting here now, and Sister Simpson seen her on the street and knowed Abner was having trouble with his woman, put two and two together, and got 79. 79? Yeah, that's as close as that woman can get to anything. Well, what do you think that we should do about it, Long? Well, there's just one thing to do, and that's make Sister Simpson and Elizabeth think that me and Annabelle are in love with one another. You? Yes, sir. I'll do anything to get Abner out of this mix-up. I'll even go that far. Yes, sir. There ain't no one sacrifice that's too big for a feller to make for his best friend. Oh, you're a brave man, Long. Thank you, Mousy. Well, now, how do you go about making them think that you're in love with Annabelle, Long? Oh, well, that's easy. Now, here's what we'll do. Get out one of them greeting cards there, one that talks about love. One of them in the slush and mush department, as Grandpap calls them. Yes, sir. Well, will one of these Valentines do here? No, no. Use one of them cards we wrote up for a fellow to use when he sent his sweetheart some flowers. Oh, yeah, those are dandies. I've got a new one right here in my pocket, too, Lum. I just wrote last night. I love you more than each little rose, more than any flower that grows. I love you more than a river that flows. I love you more than old man Mose. Well, that last line don't sound quite right. Better cross that last line out. Yes, sir. Now, hand me one of them envelopes over there. Yes, sir. Now, if you'll hand me... Uh, wait a minute, I've got a pencil I can use. I'll write on here to Annabelle Kearney. Yes, sir. Here's the envelope, Mom. There. Now, put the card inside, Mousy, and then I want you to take a walk. A walk? Yeah. Go over near the boarding house, and when you see Sister Simpson come out on the street, you walk past her and accidental drop the envelope. And that's all we need to do. Well, are you sure that she'll pick it up and read it, Long? Oh, yeah. Let me see before you put it in there how it goes. Yes, sir. I love you more than each little rose, more than any flower. Well, you started out, you signed it to Annabelle Kearney up here at the top, Long. To Annabelle Kearney, I love you more than each little rose, more than any flower that grows. I love you more than the river that flows. I love you more than old man Moe. Well, you're supposed to cut out that last line. Yes, That's sir. fine. I'll put her in there. Yes, sir. Now, don't worry, Master. This is one time I sure I know what I'm doing. Yes, sir. There ain't about one fella I know of that's smart enough to outwit a woman in things like this. And if I wasn't so modest, I'd mention my name. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Lum, you didn't sign your name to this card either. Oh, well, that ain't no need to do that. I'm putting it in this jot em down story envelope. They'll know where it come from. I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. And now, 
Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner followed Grandpappy Spears' suggestion of patching things up with Elizabeth by giving her a present, a little kitten named Annabelle. Somehow, this name reached Sister Simpson, and that tireless gossip monger immediately imagined Annabelle to be a woman. When this news reached Lum, he decided that Sister Simpson must have in mind an ex-Pine Ridge girl named Annabelle Kearney. So, in order to save Abner, he and Mousy formed a plan which would start a rumor that it was Lum and not Abner that was in love with Miss Kearney. As we look in our little community today, we find Lum in the Jotham Down store and library, and Mousy is just entering. Listen. Well, good morning, Mousy. Come on in. Uh, morning, Lum. I've been waiting for you, Mousy. Yes, sir. How did everything turn out with the greeting card to Annabelle? No. Well, I've come prepared to make you a full report, Lum. Well, good. Uh, did Sister Simpson pick it up and read it all right? Well, I have all that in the report, Lum. Well, hurry up and give me the report then. Yes, sir. Uh, have you seen Abner yet this morning? No, no, he ain't been in. I'm anxious to see him, though. Yes, sir. Well, hurry up and tell me what happened with you and the greeting card. Well, just a minute now. Wait till I get the report out here. For goodness sake, did you have to write it out? Can't you recollect nothing that long? Well, yes, sir. I could remember it, I guess, long, but I don't like to trust memory for important things. You know, I like to be accurate, especially in detail matters. Well, there ain't no details to recollect. All you got to do is tell me yes or no. Yes, sir. Well, here, Lum, here's the report right here. I knew I had it someplace. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, of course I am. Hurry up. Well, report of Llewellyn Snavely Gray. 4.22 p.m. Left Jotham Down Store bearing love note addressed to Annabelle Kearney. Note contained in Jotham Down Store envelope. Well, I know all that. 4.24 p.m. Arrived at point within sight of Sister Simpson's boarding house approximately 34 degrees... 44 minutes, 56 seconds latitude. Oh, for goodness sakes, Mouse. And 92 degrees, 16 minutes, 24 seconds longitude west. Well, do you have to put all that in there? Well, now, I've got to admit to you, Lum, that may be a little off now. I couldn't be too sure about that because my compass has been acting up something awful here lately. Well, throw your compass away and tell me what actually happened. Who cares about that longitude stuff? Well, now, Lum, as I've said before, I like to be accurate. You like to drive a man stark raving mad crazy, too. Hurry up, tote on. Well, let's see. Uh, 429, waiting at above name point, but have not yet seen Sister Simpson emerge from boarding house. 436, still waiting for Sister Simpson. 443, Still no Sister Simpson. Well, get on to where you do see her. That's the important part. Yes, sir. 4.59, woman emerges from boarding house. Uh, Yeah? It proves to be Miss Frederick, the local school teacher. Oh. 5.12, Sister Simpson emerges from boarding house, but only long enough to brush flies from screen door. Oh, for goodness sake. 6 o'clock sharp, went home to supper. Went home to supper? Yes, sir. That's me. I went home to supper, Lum. Enjoyed dandy meal of liver and bacon and turnip greens and cornbread. After supper, read following comic strips in my hometown paper while seated in the parlor of our house. Mm. The comic strips I read included Dick Tracy, Superman, Mousy for good Tarzan, the Phantom. Buck Rogers... Well, cut all that stuff out. I ain't interested in what literature you read of a night. Well, now, I like to be accurate on these things, Lon. Yeah, but this ain't getting us nowhere. What I want to know is whether Sister Simpson ever got that love card from me to Annabelle Kearney. Well, now, just see. Let me glance over the report here and see. I see. (laughs) Well... I believe I forgot to put that down, Lon. Oh, oh, swan to goodness. You get yourself so wrapped up in these reports of yours that you always forget the main idea of the whole thing. Well, uh, come to think of it, Lum, I believe Sister Simpson did come out of the house before I went home to supper, and I haven't gotten it down here. Well, did you drop the note where she could find it? Yes, sir, I did. And then when I got up to the corner, why, I sort of glanced around, I saw that she'd picked it up and was reading it. Are you sure? Yes, sir. 
And uh, then after she read the note, why, she ran back into the house. She did, huh? Yes. Well, that's good. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> well, I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why I forgot to put that down, Mom. Well, I don't know why you recollected to put all that other prittle prattle down. You could have told me all I wanted to know in just one second. Yes, sir. Well, you know me, Lum. I do like to be accurate. Yeah, I know. Well, now, what's the next step in our campaign, Lum? Well, there ain't no next step. That's all we are to it. Our work's all been dead. It has? Yeah, all we have to do now is just sit around and wait for the results. Well. And we'll get them due as soon as Abner gets here. Well, Lum, do you think that this really will get Abner out of his trouble? Why, of course it will. You see, here's how it works, Mousy. I explained it to you the other day. Yes, sir. I... Sister Simpson picked up that note from me to Annabelle Kearney. Yes, sir. She read it, too. Well, so right away she figured that it was me instead of Abner that's in love with Annabelle. Yes. Well, are you in love with her, love? Oh, no. Of course not. I ain't even saw her since she got into town. Well. And what's more, I ain't going to see her if I can help it. No, sir. All I want to do is just plant this idea in Sister Simpson's mind. Yes, sir. Well, when you seen her run back in the house, she was heading right for the telephone. I know what she's going to do. I she know was. Sister Simpson too long. Yes, sir. <laughs> she more than likely called up every woman in this town and told them the new gossip about me. She did. Yeah, I can just hear her spreading <laughs> it on. Well, isn't this liable to get you in trouble, old long? Yeah, but I couldn't sit by and see Abner and his woman getting into a squabble just over untrue rumor and a bunch of gossips. No, sir. Uh, I'll more likely have some explaining to do around town, but I've got out of these things before. I can do it again. You worried about that. <laughs> well, you're a brave man, Lon. Oh, yeah. Well, anyways, Elizabeth will hear about it, too, and somebody will call her and tell her, you know. They will. Lum's in love with Annabelle Kearney. And, yes. Sir. And then she'll know how bad she's misjudged Abner and accused him false and all. Yes, sir. And then she'll be sorrowful and try to do everything she can to make up for it. And her and Abner will live happy ever after. <laughs> that sounds just like a book, doesn't it? Yeah, Mike? yeah. Well, it sure is working out wonderful, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Well, I ain't lived all these years for nothing, Mousy, if I do say it myself. I don't like to cast compliments right in my own face, but I've picked up a right smart uh, practical learning in my time. Yes, sir. What I ought to do is write a book about it. How to Get Along in Life and Influence People by Lum Edwards. Yes, sir. Well, that's... Would be dandy, all right, Lon. Yeah, come to think about it, it's sort of a shame for me to keep all this learning to myself. Downright selfish now that I think about it. Well, we could publish a book right here, Lon. The Edwards and Gray Publishing Company could publish it. That's right, ain't it? Yes, sir. As long as I'm president, I ought to be able to talk myself into publishing my own book. I think so. <laughs> I don't believe I'd have to put up much of an argument. Oh, I might hold out a little bit right at first, just to show that it ain't easy to get a book published by our company. Just take first-class books, that's all. Yes. Uh, look, there comes Abner across the street there now, huh? Uh, oh, good, good. Now now you'll get to see the results, Mousy. I will. Yeah, Granny, it's going to be good to see him smiling again. Yes, sir. Poor little feller. He's been going around here with that hangdog expression on his face for three or four days now. Well, sir, I guess Abner sure is lucky to have a friend like you, Lon. Oh, I'll go so first to say that, hardly. I ain't done nothing that no other feller wouldn't do for a friend, I don't think. If you ain't a friend in need, you ain't no friend in need. I all I say. Yes, sir. Mind out, here he comes. Try to act sort of casual about the whole thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, morning, Abner. Come on in, old boy. Wonderful world. Morning. How's every little thing, Abner? Sure a fine day out, ain't it? I don't know. Wait a minute here. What's the matter with you? Ain't you happy? What's there to be happy about? Granny, you look like you ain't had no sleep hardly. Well, I ain't had no sleep. That blamed grandpappy Spears kept tossing and rolling all night long. Mike and I kicked me out of bed a thousand or a hundred times. Wait a minute. Are you telling me that you slept over at the Spears' this last night? Well, I had to. I couldn't get in over at my place. Elizabeth had me locked out. Locked out? This isn't quite how you thought it'd work out, is it, Lon? Hey, shut, Mousy. Let me get this straight, Abner. Did Elizabeth actually lock the door on you? She done it, yes. Well, what'd she want to do a thing like that for? I don't know, Lom. I've got to where I don't understand nothing around here no more. Well, did you do anything else to make her mad at you? Why, no. Facts is, I was trying to be nice to her. I brought her home a present. 
but I couldn't even get inside to give it to her. Present, did you say? Yeah, present. I brought her a little black kitten named Annabelle. Named Annabelle? Yeah, got it over at Grandma Master's place, but I'll I'll give it back to them now, because I believe that name's unlucky for me, Lum. Lum, do you recollect Annabelle Kearney? Oh, yeah, of course I do. Well, do you know that that Sister Simpson, what she's saying about her? Why, no, uh... What is Sister Simpson saying about it? Why, she claims that Annabelle Kearney and me is in love with one another. Annabelle and you? Why, yes, and I ain't even saw that Annabelle woman for years and years. Well, just a minute. Are you sure you're the one that Sister Simpson was talking about? Why, sure. Aunt Charity Spears here told her that Sister Simpson claims that she found a love note of some kind addressed to Annabelle Kearney. Said she found it in the street over there by her boarding house. Yeah, but you never sent that. Why, of course I never. I mean, there ain't nothing on the note that says it come from you. Well, according to Sister Simpson, why, it was supposed to have been in a jotting down store envelope. Yeah, but your name weren't signed on it nowhere, was it? Why, no, but Sister Simpson claims that there weren't no name at all signed on it. No name at all? No. I guess maybe I ought to sign my name to it. Find your name to her. Uh, I mean, it, it, it would have been lucky for you if I had a. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, come on back to the feed room, Mousy. Uh, we got to have a meeting of the Edwards and Gray Publishing. I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, Jotham Down Store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, the more Lum tries to help Abner out of his marital troubles, the deeper Abner gets in. Lum's attempt to make Sister Simpson think that he was the one involved with Annabelle Kearney and not Abner failed because he forgot to sign a certain love note, and hence the town gossips thought the note was from Abner. However, Lum has a new direct plan to straighten things out in the Peabody family, and as we look in on the little community today, we find Lum and Abner walking along the street in the late evening. They're heading for Abner's house. Listen. Well, now, Lom, it ain't no use coming over here to the place. Elizabeth's got that door locked tighter than a drum, I can tell you that. Well, then you'll just have to break down the door then, Abner. Fact is, that's what I was aiming on having you do anyway. Break down the door? Yes, sir. That'll do more good towards p- patching up this trouble twist you and Elizabeth and there's one thing you could do. Well, I don't understand how that do any good. Well, to be honest, I don't exactly understand it myself, Abner, but in my nigh every moving picture I ever seen, that's how the feller finally wins a girl. By breaking down the door? Yes, sir. Huh. As soon as he does that, why, she falls in his arms and the picture's over and you find your wife's shoes and take your dishes and go home. Yeah, well, now that you mention it, I believe I have saw that happen in moving pictures. But I still don't think it'll work for me, though, Lon. Well, why wouldn't it? It's the same situation. It's the way all these things work out. Boy meets girl, boy loses girl, boy breaks down door. Just a minute. Now, who's this boy we're going to get to do all this? Cedric? No, no, I ain't talking about Cedric. I'm talking Well, about... I believe Cedric could be the one, Lon. He's good and strong. He could splinter that door in no time at all. Yeah, but we ain't going to get Cedric for this. Well, what boy are we going to get, then? We ain't getting no boy. You're the one that's going to do it. Oh, no, no, I believe your other idea's better, Lum, for if we get a boy to break the door, while well, Elizabeth will blame it on to him, but if I do it, while well, she'll be so hopping mad at me, I never will get back in the house. Oh, yes, she will. You'll be surprised how good this works. It's the romantics thing to do. Romantics? Yeah, and at a time like this, a woman's a heap more interested in romantics than she is in a few little old pieces of wood in the door. She is, huh? Yeah, it shows her how much you'll go through to... Get her to take you back again. Yeah, well, maybe you're right. 
I still think it'd be better to get a boy to do it, though. No, it wouldn't. I, I know what I'm talking about. Mom? Yeah? I'm hungry. Hungry? Yes, sir. Somehow that restaurant food I've been eating the last few days down there at Luke's Pier don't seem to satisfy me like Elizabeth's cooking does. Well, natural. That's the reason I want you to make up so we can go back home here. Dog is walking along here just reminds me all them nights I went home to supper. And this is a day Elizabeth always fixes my favorite dish to corned beef. Corned beef, huh? Oh, yeah, doggy, that was sure good the way she used to fix it. Sounds good. I can just see a plate of it sitting there on the supper table. Well, now, wait a minute, Abner. Don't start getting so cinnamon over a thing like that. Besides, you're making me hungry, too. This is the day she always fixed it. Never missed. Well, after you get in the house tonight and her and you make up with one another, I bound you she'll run right out to the kitchen and make up a thousand or a hundred pounds of corned beef for you. Well, it'll take longer than that to cook it, old Lom. She couldn't get it ready for me tonight. Well, maybe she's already cooked some. Just because she's in the habit of it, you know. Yeah. I the main guess. thing to worry about now is getting this misunderstanding twixt her and you straightened out. Yeah, I reckon so. Come on, walk faster, Abner. What are you hanging back for her? I don't know. I just don't believe this is don't going to do no good, Lum. Why, yes, it will. It'll do a lot of good. No, oh, no, I'm afraid it won't. I know we can break in the house, all right, but after I get in, why, I just know I won't be able to explain nothing to Elizabeth. You know, she got that note that Sister Simpson found, the one that was addressed to Annabelle Kearney. Well, don't worry about that note. You never actually sent that. Well, no, but it was in a jot and down store envelope, and that looks awful bad for me. Well, you just let me worry about that note. The main reason I'm coming along now with you is to explain to Elizabeth about that. Well, now, what can you tell her to make any difference or convince her that I'm innocent? Listen, Abner, I'll tell you something if you'll promise not to get mad at me before I get through telling you the whole thing. Well, I won't get mad. Well, I'll be sure you don't. You see, I was the one that actually sent that note. You? You sent it? Now, wait a minute, Abner. Don't look at me that way. Uh-huh. I'll explain the rest of it to you. i just done it to help you out. Help me out? Yes, sir. Why, that note's a thing that got me locked out of my own place. I know, but that was just on account of my plan never worked out exactly right. You see, I never bothered to sign my name to the note, because I figured that when Sister Simpson seen the jot em down story envelope, well, right away she'd know it come from me. Well, yeah, but I'm as much a part of that store as you are, Long. Yeah, I know, I know. That's where I slipped up a little. You sure did. I don't know now how come it overlooked that, but anyways, I- I'm going to explain the whole thing to Elizabeth. And what if she don't believe you, though? Then she's got to believe me. I'll talk till I'm black and white in the face. I'll convince her some way. I know I can. Well, when did you start falling in love with Annabelle Kearney? In love with Annabelle? Why, well, I ain't in love with her. Well, what are you doing sending her them love notes for her, then? Well, I never actually sent none to her. I, I just had Mousy drop that note near the boarding house where Sister Simpson could find it, that's all. I wanted to get a rumor started that it was me and not you that was seeing Annabelle. I weren't seeing Annabelle. I know you wasn't, but Sister Simpson thought you was, and she was spreading the gossip around. Oh. So I just done this to protect you. Well, well, bless your heart, Mom. And you done that just for me. Yeah, but it weren't nothing, hardly. Mom? Hmm. Yeah? I'm hungry. Well, just forget that for a minute now, because here's your house. you got a door to break down before you can sit down and eat. Yeah, well, now, are you sure now this side is going to work out all right? Of course it will. Come on, let's turn in here. I'm going up on the porch. I don't get it. It's awful dark around here. Elizabeth and little Pearl must have went to bed early. Well, maybe, maybe we ought to come back in the morning and do this. No, no, no. Now's the time. It's a heap more romantics at night this way. It is, huh? Why, well, sure. Uh, careful them poor steps there along. Yeah. One of them boards is loose. Maybe the best been after me to fix that for the last six or seven years. I ought to have did it, too. All right. Come on up here to the door now. Well, maybe I ought to get a hammer and fix that step right now. No, no, now that can wait. Put your shoulder to the door there. See if you can break it in. Yeah, all right. No, can't do it. Well, of course not. Not that way. Don't be so gentle. Hit it hard. Yeah, but that's liable to wake Elizabeth up too well, long. Of course it will. That's what you want to do. Huh? How else is she going to know what you're trying to do here? 
Oh, that's right, that's right, Aunt Well, I dog it, I'll hit her one time here. I'll bust it in. Mom, I don't believe I can ever break this thing. That's too solid. Wait a minute. I believe you ought to have a chair. A chair? Yeah. Well, here, wait a minute. That ain't the trouble. I can reach the door all right. I'm tall enough for that. I just ain't got strength enough to break it in. I don't mean stand on the chair. I mean use it to batter the door down with. Huh? Beat the door down with the chair. Oh, oh, The way I've seen them fellas in the moving pictures do it. Yeah, yeah, I saw them do that, too. Yeah, Yeah, that's the thing to do. Get a chair. Yeah, well, I know it. Wait just a minute. I'll go inside and get one. Now, what kind of a chair do you think is going to be best, Lon? Oh, it don't matter much. Just so it's big and heavy. One that won't break too easy. Yeah, all right. If you could, if you could carry that divan, that would do. Oh, that thing's too heavy. Elizabeth can't hardly carry that out and do house cleaning there in this thing. Don't be this dark in here. Yeah. Well, turn on the light there. Well, I don't want to wake Elizabeth, huh? I told you once, it don't matter if you do wake her oh, up. Oh, oh, What's the matter? I don't, I just found a chair. Oh, well, good, good. Come on, let's get it on outside now and start battering down. Or oh, wait a minute. What's the matter with us? Huh? We don't need to break in here. We don't. That's what we come over here for. Yeah, but we're already inside. Huh? The door weren't even locked at all. I know that that's right, ain't it? My goodness, if that ain't a good or no, <laughs> trying to break through an open door. <laughs> I do know. I don't get wait a minute long. Huh? You don't reckon that means that Elizabeth has forgiven me and made up with me? I mean, her leaving the door unlocked this way. She's had it locked, wouldn't let me come in the house. I hadn't thought about that. <laughs> Granny, I wouldn't be a bit surprised, ever. Well, bless her heart. Why don't you call her and see? Yeah. yeah. I'll turn the light on. Yeah, here. yeah, turn it on. I don't get this the happiest minute of my life. Elizabeth! Elizabeth, honey! It's me! <laughs> Elizabeth! It's me, Abner! Abner Peabody, her husband! Elizabeth! She might be hiding around here somewhere. It's just a joy, Deborah. <laughs> just about what she's doing, bless her heart. Well, that shows she's in a good humor. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Elizabeth, where are you hiding now? Come on out here, honey. Elizabeth! I know where you are. You might as well come on out. Yeah, well, she's more than likely to jump out and surprise you. Elizabeth! Elizabeth! All out. She's in free. Wait a minute, Aaron. What's this here on the table? Huh? Looks like a note addressed to you. To me? What does it say? Yeah, let's see here. It says, uh, Abner, I am sorry that things have turned out the way they have, but since they have, I feel the only right thing for me to do is take little Pearl and go away somewhere. Go away? Goodbye, Abner. Yours truly, Elizabeth. Oh, well, what? She's went away and left me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a postscript here. Huh? P.S. There is some cold sliced corned beef for you in the icebox. Well, did you hear that, Abner? Corned beef. You get your corned beef after all. <laughs> Mom. Uh, yeah. I ain't hungry no more. I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, life is indeed gloomy for poor Abner. Elizabeth and little Pearl have left him. All Abner found when he entered his house to settle his marital misunderstandings was a brief farewell note and some cold corned beef in the icebox. All efforts to locate Elizabeth and Pearl have failed so far, and her disappearance is shrouded in mystery. As we look in on the little community today, we see the old fellows in their jot-em-down store and library, Abner 
is talking on the telephone. Listen. No letter at all, huh? Not even a postcard? Yeah, well, if anything comes for me, well, let me know right away, Dick. All right. Goodbye. And blame it. Didn't get a single word. Well, natural. Elizabeth went away and left you. She ain't going to sit around writing love letters to you. Well, she could at least write and tell me where she's at long. Well, she don't want you to know where she's at. At least not right away. She wants to keep that a secret more than likely. Well, I ought to have got a letter from her brother then, the one that lives down there in Texas. When Elizabeth goes anywhere, that's where she generally goes. So I read him and asked him if she was there, but he won't even answer my letter. Well, he ain't had time to answer it yet. Oh, he's had enough time. Just sits around the house, don't hardly ever do nothing. Well, except go to work every day. He's got plenty of time to write, though. I mean, there ain't been time for a letter to get to him and for him to send one back to you. Oh, he just says that. Just using that for an excuse. Actually, he's just too honor to write to me. That's the whole thing. Just too honor. Well, honored. now, wait a minute, Abner. You're jumping at conclusions here. More than likely, he's taken my letter and tore it up in little bitty pieces. That's just about what he done. Maybe he never even read it before he tore it up. I don't know. Abner, before you go around making statements like that, you ought to get the facts of the case first. Snake in the weeds. Imagine a fella doing a thing like that long. Your own brother-in-law tying up a letter without even reading it first. He never done no such a thing. He did do it. He never. Well, if he never done it, then how'd I find out about it? Well, just wait a minute now. Tell uh, me exactly how did you find out about it. Why? It... Uh, let's see now. Where did I hear that? I know I heard it somewhere. The only place you heard it was from yourself, and all you done was imagine it. No, sir, I heard it somewhere. No, you never. So just forget that and try to relax. This whole thing's got you so upset you don't know hardly what you're doing. Well, maybe it was Grandpappy Spears that told no, me. No, it wasn't Grandpappy. Now, stop worrying, Abner. See, who You'll was? get a hearing from your brother-in-law in a day or so, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Elizabeth come back quicker than ever then. Come back? Why, sure she won't be able to stay away very long, I don't think. They always come back. Well, I don't believe Elizabeth will, old lump. That note she left for me sounded awful fine. Sometimes they come back when you don't want them. Yeah, well, I want her back, but she said in that note that she could see that the only thing to do was just take little Pearl and leave me for good. Yeah, I know, but again, she gets away from here, she'll start recollecting how nice everything used to be at home. Then she'll get to missing, you know, and get homesick. She'll be back. Mm, dog it, I hope so. Tell you, Lum, again, I wake up in the morning and I don't hear Elizabeth and little Pearl clattering around the house. It just don't seem like there's any reason to get up. Hmm. Don't seem like life's worth living no more. Elizabeth clatters in the morning, does she? Oh, yeah, her and little Pearl. Get out there and chop wood to build a fire to cook breakfast. I lay there in bed here every morning. Every morning of the world. Well, now, chop, chop. Oh, Pull yourself together, Abner. This ain't going to last but a few days more. At least I don't think it will. All as before, I wish Elizabeth and Pearl had quiet down and quit all that noise in the morning so as I could get some sleep. And, right, doggies, now I'd give anything in the world to hear that noise. Chop, chop. That's the way with everything. A fella don't never appreciate something till he has to get along without it. Yeah. You never miss the water till the well goes dry. I've always uh -huh. said that. Well, we got a good well of water, Lom. It's Elizabeth that's wormy. Her being gone. I know. I just use. I could borrow it. water from the neighbors, but Elizabeth's gone, Lom. That's the worst thing that could happen to me. I know one thing. If Elizabeth ever does come back, I'm going to be awful good to her. Never get mad at her again. Never say a mean word to her. Well, Lom, good Lom. for you, Abner. I'm proud to hear you say that. I know, I might even help her chop the wood. Once in a while. Well, now, wait a minute, Abner. Don't get yourself carried away with all your good resolutions here. It's one thing to be good to you, woman, but actual doing woman's work's going a little too far. Yes, huh? Yeah. She'll have you milking the cows and feeding the stock and doing the plowing the first thing you know. All right, doggy, that's just about right. And she won't have no respect for you if you start doing things like that. No, no, I reckon you're right, Long. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, though. I'll keep the axe good and sharp for her. I'll do well, that. Well, that's all right. Dog it, I wish she'd come back. I sure Don't miss Don't worry, she will. Just be patient. Well, I can't be patient at a time like this. Dog it, wait a minute. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm going to go get her. Well, 
How can you do that? Well, I'll do it some way. I'll carry her all the way home if I have to, but I'm going to get her back here long. Yeah, but you don't know where to get there. Huh? So far, we ain't been able to find a single clue telling, her, telling us where she might have went. Huh? Not a single person we've talked to knows a thing about her, or else they ain't telling us the truth, one. Yeah, well, I know where she's at. She's down in Texas at her brother's place. That's where she's no, at. No, you don't know that for sure now, I have. I do done it, Lom. That's why her brother tore up that letter of mine. He just don't want me to know she's down oh, there. Oh, for goodness sake. Oh, because I'll show him a couple of things or two. I'll go right down there and drag that young lady home. That's what I'll do. And I won't stop to pick up the broke glass, neither. Broke glass? No, sir. What broke glass? Why the glass in the window? You'll have all the doors locked on me. Where I can't get in the house, I'll just have to break through a window. All I hope is he misses me. Misses you? Yeah, I'd hate to get filled full of buckshot. Now, wait a minute. Are you trying to make me believe that he'd get out a gun and start shooting at you? Why, sure he will. Well, let out, Captain, anything I've heard you say yet. I know it, I know it. I don't understand it myself, Mom. I don't know what's come over that man. I just can't figure it out. Used to be such a nice, gentle sort of a feller, too. My favorite brother-in-law. Now look at him, firing a gun at his own relay. Oh, for goodness sakes, he ain't doing no such a thing. Why, he is. That's what they're saying about him. Who's they? Huh? Who's all these fellers that's saying that? Why, uh, uh... See there, you don't know. This is all just your imagination, Abner. And that's something you ought to get over. Because well, someday that imagination of yours will more than likely be a ruination of you, getting you in a lot of trouble. So just watch out for it. Well, that ain't what I'm watching out for. It's that buckshot that I'm worried about right Abner, now. Abner, there ain't going to be no buckshot fired at you. Your brother-in-law is a nice feller, and he wouldn't even do such a thing as that. Why, he would, Lum, since this change has come over. I don't believe you'd even recognize him now. Looks like a different feller, Lum. Well, how do you know? You ain't saw him for a couple of three years. How can you tell what he looks like now? Huh? You see, this is all just your imagination, Abner. All you got to do is say something out loud, and right away you think it's something you've heard someplace, and it's actually the truth. What if I went around doing that, too? Then his both of us had been ruined a long time ago. All I know, Lum, is that I hate and despise that low-down brother-in-law of mine. No, you don't. I you do. You ain't got a single reason in the world to hate him. Tell her shooting at you and you won't hate him for Well, wait till you find out the facts before you say anything like that. Try to pattern yourself after me for a while. After you? Yeah. I always find out the actual true facts of anything before I make any statements. You do, huh? Yeah, that way I always know what I'm talking about. You don't hear me going around making mistakes like you do. Just the same, I hate and despise my brother-in-law. No, you don't, Abner. Yeah, yeah, I do. Who you ought to hate is Sister Simpson. Or Annabelle Kearney. There's the one. There's the woman to blame right there. She's the one that caused all this trouble. If she hadn't come to Pine Ridge for a visit, none of this would ever happen. Yeah, dog as I believe you're right, Mom. Dad, blame her anyway. And as you know what I've got a good mind to do? Huh? I believe I'll just call her up and tell her exactly what I think of her. Yeah, call her up, call her up. I, dog as I'll tell her a couple of things myself. Uh, whereabouts is she staying? Over at the Blevins' place? I reckon so. She always does whenever she comes to town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her and the Blevins' is some kind of kin, I think. Cousins or something. What's their ring? Ah, uh, two shorts and a long, I believe it is, long. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, no, it ain't. A short and a long, a short, that's what it is. Made a mistake. Well, as I know that place, I had you calling the Bates's place there. I wish that woman would have never come to town. Let's just tell her to get out wait, of town and never wait, come wait, back. Wait. Oh. Hello? Is that you, Miss Blevins? Well, I'd like to speak with Annabelle. Uh, yeah, Annabelle to Kearney. I'll speak to her, too, Mom. Mom? On her and my brother-in-law out of town. Oh, has she left already? He was here. She never. Are you sure about that? Oh, I was fine to goodness. Mom? Oh, no, no, it weren't nothing important. Fact is, I believe I had the wrong name, come to think about it. No, that's her name, Mom. Sorry I bothered you, Miss Blavin. <laughs> well, all right. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Well, I do know. What's the matter, Mom? That's curious. Huh? Annabelle Kearney ain't in town. She ain't? Oh, and what's more, she ain't been here neither. Not for three years, Miss Blevins said. Well, for the land's sake. 
Well, how did all these stories about her get started then? Yes, I don't know. Whereabouts did you hear that Annabelle Carney was in town long? I was just trying to think. Was it Mousy Gray? No, it couldn't have been Mousy, because I was the one who told him. Hmm. Sister Simpson? No, I don't believe so. No, I know it wasn't. I recollect she called up here asking about a cat named Annabelle. Yeah, well, that was the one I got Elizabeth for a present, but never had a chance to give it to her. And then after that, let's see. Well, for goodness sakes, huh? I don't believe nobody told me. Huh? I just got to putting two and two together that day, and I was the one that started this whole, er, that is, uh, uh well, just skip it. Uh, uh, what, what were you going to say? Nothing, Abner. It ain't nothing important. Well, what was it? I told you it weren't nothing important. Well, now, it must have been something like All that. I was going to say, Abner, was that I've changed my mind. I don't believe you ought to pattern yourself after me, Abner. <laughs> Abner, I believe that's our ring. I had no good llama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lum and Abner. No? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, no trace of Elizabeth and Little Pearl has been found yet, and Abner's enforced bachelorhood is beginning to get the better of him. Anxiously, he awaits each day's mail deliveries, but always he's doomed to disappointment. As we look in on the little community today, we find Lum in the Jotham Down store and library trying to console and to advise his unhappy business partner. Listen. Well, now, pull yourself together, Abner. If a letter comes for you, Dick Hudson will see that it gets over here to you. Well, yeah, but I ought to have got a letter long for this one. Either from Elizabeth or that brother-in-law of mine, one. Don't forget I wrote to him and asked him if Elizabeth was staying at his place down there in Texas. Yeah, I know you did. You've told me that a thousand or a hundred times. Well, why don't he answer me then? Well, give him time. Give him time. You'll get a hearing from him. Don't worry. Ah, doggy Lom, I just can't sit around this way waiting. I got to get out here and hunt for Elizabeth, find out where she's at. Well, we're doing all we can to find her, Abner. Just try to take it easy for a while. Oh, I can't worry to death. Things are going to come out all right. You just wait and see. I hope so. Just recollect that every cloud has a silver filling. That's old Leonard saying. Every cloud has a silver filling. Yeah, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There comes Mousy up out there. Reckon he's got a letter for me? Well, he might have. All right, wait a minute. Look there, Long. He, he's got a piece of paper of some kind in his hand. That's it. That's it. It's a short word. That's my letter right well, now. Uh, don't get your hopes up too high. <laughs> that might just be a report. A report? Yeah, he's been out doing some detective work, trying to find some clues where Liz Meth might have went to. Oh, oh. I told him not to make out none of them idiotic reports of his, but he'll more likely do it anyway if he always does. Yeah, well, I, I believe that's a letter he's got this time, old I'm sure to work. Well, howdy, Mousy. Yeah, howdy, Mousy. Come on in. Hello, Lum. Abner. What have you got there, Mousy? I, is it a letter for me, Mousy? Well, no, sir. This is an official report. Uh-oh. I was scared of that. Dad, blame it anyway. Whereabouts is that letter for me? That's what I want to know. Well, don't worry, Abner. You'll get one sooner or later. Official report of Llewellyn Snavely Gray, alias the master... Now, wait a minute, Mousy. I ain't got time to listen to all that prittle prattle you always write down in them reports of yours. Well, I made this one very brief, Lum, like you told me to do. Well, it's still too long. All I want you to tell me is whether you found any clues about Elizabeth's disappearance. Well, I... Much rather give it to you in the official form, Lum, then you get the true picture of the whole I thing. don't want to hear it that way. Just tell me. Answer my question. Well, Lum, I'm sorry, but I'll have to make it in the form of a report. Well, go ahead and give me the true picture then. Always do everything right. That's what well, I always say. Hurry up and make it short. Yes, sir. Official report of Llewellyn Snavely Gray, alias the Masked Muskrat. The Masked Muskrat? 
Yes, sir. That's the new name I've adopted. It's my professional name, Lum. It is, huh? Yes, well, sir. Well, hurry up. Toad on. Yes, sir. Alias the Mask Muskrat. Operator 13K58. Just a minute, Mousie. The other day you was operating her number 26. I thought you was such a great fella for being accurate. Yes, sir. Well, that's all explained in the footnote, Lum. Footnote? Yes, sir. Hi, Granny, are you putting footnotes in these reports now? Yes, sir. Here's the footnote right here. Footnote. Operator 13K58 was formally designated as Operator 26. Changes of this type are frequently made to confuse enemy agents, crooks, petty thieves, and other criminals. See, I've got it all down there for you, Lon. Mm, you ain't the only ones you're confusing, either. Now, skip over all that stuff that don't mean nothing. Get down to the main part there. Well, that comes next here, Lon. Let's see. Yes, here it is. And it's brief and to the point, too. Well, good. Question to be answered by report. Did you find out anything about Elizabeth Peabody's disappearance? And here's the answer, Lon. Yeah. Answer, quote, no, unquote. Is that it? Is that your report? Yes, sir. Now, isn't that nice and brief like you want me to make Pretty it, Lon? Now, why couldn't you just tell me that without going through all that other rigmarole about masked muskrats and stuff? Well, you know me, Lum. I like to be accurate, you know. Swan do goodness. If that don't have to cap anything I've ever run up again in my whole life. Well, I guess I better get back on the job, Lum. Yeah, I think you'd better, too. I'll be back with another report just as soon as I have anything to report, Lum. Well, don't make it too soon. If you don't never do it, that's plenty soon enough for me. Well, I'll be back before that. The masked muskrat never fails. Hi-ho, muskrat. Hi-ho, muskrat. <laughs> that don't beat the bugs of fighting. A growed-up man running around acting like a middle-sized lunatic. Trying to be like some character in friction that he's more than likely read about Summers, I reckon. Uh-huh. If you see him coming back with another report any time today, just let me know so that I can go and hide in a feed room or someplace. Abner, are you listening to me? Uh-huh. Well, you don't look like it. Well, I'm just sitting here wondering, Lum, why in the world I don't get a letter from Elizabeth. I can't understand it. Dog, is Elizabeth been gone for several days now, Lum, and I ain't heard a word. Not from her or nobody else. She just disappeared, and I ain't been able to hear a thing I'm from her. all about it. You don't have to tell me about it. Well. You'll hear from her, don't worry. I don't know. I don't believe the mail hack's got in here yet today. He's been coming pretty late the last couple of weeks. Why, well, he come early yesterday and the day before that, too. I was down there at the post office waiting for him. Well, I mean, some days he comes late. Oh. This is more than likely one of them. Well, I wish he'd hurry up and get here before I go pump start raving mad crazy. Well, hello, Cedric. Wonderful world. Yeah, come on in, Cedric. Yeah, come on in. What can we do for you today? Oh, huh. Let's see now. What did I come over here for? Well, can't you recollect, Cedric? Oh, I'll, I'll get it. Just don't rush me. Let me study on it here a minute. Now, yeah, let's see now. What could you come over here for? What, was it some groceries of some kind you wanted? No, Mom, I don't believe it was groceries. Was it some horseshoes for your Paul's blacksmith shop? No, Mom. No, I know it weren't that. Well, let's see. Uh, was it sugar? H- have you got your sugar rationing book with you? No, no. Uh, I believe you're getting warm, though. Seems like I brung something with me. Well, let's see. Just a minute, Cedric. It weren't a letter, right? Letter? Oh, yes, Mom, that's it. Yep, that's it, all right, a letter. It's <laughs> just what it is. A letter? <laughs> well, right all right, dog, here, give it here quick, Cedric. <laughs> oh, I knowed I'd get one a day. I knowed it. I just felt it all along, Mom. Uh, where, whereabouts is it from, Cedric? Oh, I don't know. I never even looked. Here, you can find out for yourself i got to go doing some more deteckative work. Well, here, you, you take the letter and read it to me, Lum. I'm too excited to even think. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, hurry well, up. I'll hurry see up. you fellas later. i got to get on the job. I'm an assistant to be a big deteckative now. Yeah? Uh, who is he? Well, I can't tell. It's a secret. So long. I hold my muskrat. Hurry up, Lum. Hurry up. Read it, Lum. Uh, what did it say? What's it about? Oh, What's it about? I finish getting it open here. Uh, is it from Texas? Is it, is it from Elizabeth's brother or from Elizabeth, Lum? Uh, let's see. Huh? I know. This is from the Treasury Department. The Treasury Department? That's what it says here. 
Well, I do know. Has that woman of mine went clean to Washington? To Washington? Why, sure. Ain't that where, where the Treasury Department is at, is Washington? Ain't that where you said Elizabeth was writing a letter from? Well, the letter come from there, but Elizabeth never wrote it. She never, huh? Of course not. Well, well who did then? Uh, the, uh, let me see here. Uh, hurry up, Oh, Lon. here it is. The War Saving Staff of the Treasury Department. Well, uh, was they the one that had seen Elizabeth there in Washington? No, they never seen Elizabeth. Well, how, how'd they find out she was there then? Abner, if you'll just let me explain, I'll tell you what this letter's all about. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Tells about a big Retailers for Victory campaign. Is Elizabeth running a campaign now? No, no. The Giverman is. Uh huh. They've asked us to join up with this campaign and start selling war bonds and stamps right here in the store. Uh huh. Says here that all the big and little retailers all over the country is joining up. Well. Now, Granny, they can depend on us to do our share, too. We'll sell more in our quarter. I can tell you that right now. Well, is there a profit in selling them bonds and stamps in the store here? Why, well, of course not. Er, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah, there is, too, a profit. There is, huh? Every time we sell a war bond or a stamp, we earn ourselves a nice big dividend. Well. Only it ain't in money. It's in freedom. Freedom for the future. And that's worth a heap more than dollars and pennies. Well, I do know. Well, I reckon how Elizabeth learned all that so quick, Lum. She's a smart woman, I'll say that for her. Elizabeth? Why, sure. She must have been the one that got the giver meant to ride us. Nobody else in Washington knows us, do they? No, of course not. But the idea but, of this Lum, is that the giver... you reckon Elizabeth has went and got herself into Congress... Congress. I bound you. That's just about what she did. It's sure to work. Well, bless her heart. <laughs> you, you recollect how she wanted to join up with them women suffering not so long ago around here? Women suffragettes. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And how she always wanted to run for some office, and I had to keep telling her that a woman's place was in the home and well, chopping wood. Abner, this ain't got nothing to do with that. Huh? I don't get. I better go home and get packed up. Reckon how soon I can get a train for Washington, Mom. Abner, you ain't going to Washington. Can't you understand that this letter don't say nothing about Elizabeth? Oh, trying to keep it from me, huh? No, no. They just want us to start selling all the bonds and stamps we can and help win the war. And they want us to get everybody in Pine Ridge to come in and do their share by buying them. Is that what they want? Why, sure. Now, do you understand what this is all about? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I understand it now, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, that's a really... All right, doggy, that sounds like a good idea, too, this Retailers for Victory campaign. I'm just sorrowful that I won't be able to help you with it, Lom. Won't be able to help with it? No, no. Why won't you? Why, well, I've got to go to Washington and get Elizabeth. Oh, for goodness. <laughs> Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog his lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John him down store. This is Lum and Abner. Now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, all attempts to find Abner's missing wife and daughter have met with failure. And the old fellows are a little puzzled as to what steps to take next. Abner is in a pretty upset condition and is ready to go rushing off in search of Elizabeth on the slightest clue. And Lum has his hands full trying to restrain his worried and weary partner. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store. And Cedric is just entering. Listen. Wonderful world. Uh, oh, well, morning, Cedric. Good morning, Mr. Abner. What you got in the box there? Oh, I forgot what you call them. Mr. Uh, Lum told me to go around collecting them. Heard anything from Miss Elizabeth and Little Pearl yet? Oh, no, Cedric. Ain't heard a word. Not a single word. Oh. Let, let's see what you got there. Yeah. Hey, you take them and give them to Mr. Lum when he comes in. Yeah, sure, sure. Oh, these are binoculars, Cedric. Yes, Mom, I believe that's what they are. Now, I reckon what Lum won't see is for. I don't know. He just told me to get them. That's all I know. Huh. Them three there is all I can 
Click so fur, though. That's all I could find. Well, yeah, that's curious. Now, what would Lum want with binoculars? Maybe he lost something, wants to look through these and see if he can find it. Well, I don't believe he'd go to all the trouble. Wait a minute. Reckon he could have been thinking about hunting for Elizabeth. For Elizabeth? I bound you, that's what it is, Cedric. He must have heard that Elizabeth and Pearl was all heading up in the mountains or someplace, and he's getting up in a searching party to go look for them. Is he sure now? Why, sure, bless his heart. Well, I sure wish I could go along. Boy. Well, you can, Cedric. Facts is, Lum's figuring on you going, I reckon. You got three pair of these binoculars here, ain't you? Yes, Mom. Well, there's one for Lum, one for me, and one for you. Oh, boy, one for me, too. My dog is here, Cedric. We better start getting ready, then. We'll have to get a batch of vittles together, and, well, I know something else we ought to have, too. We ought to have some horses. Horses? Well, yeah, we can cover a heap more ground and do more searching on horseback. I reckon where we could get some horses right quick. Well, Papa's got some horses over at the blacksmith shop. Huh? He's shooing them for Mr. Lunsford. Yes, huh? Oh, why don't you call your pop up and say, Rick, and see if we can borrow three of them. I know Mr. Lunsford wouldn't care, special for something like this. No, Mom, he wouldn't care. No, no. no. Papa can get them over here in about a half a minute, too, I bet you. Yeah, let's see now. I better start getting the vittles packed up. Gunny sack full ought to be enough, oughtn't it? Yes, Mom, I believe it w- Hello? Hello, is that you, Papa? Well, this here is me. Yes, Mom, Cedric. Say, Papa, could you bring three of Mr. Lunsford's horses over here to the Jotham Down store? It's for a searching party. Yes, Mom. Going up in the mountains and hunt for Miss Elizabeth. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mom. All right, Papa. Goodbye. Is he going to do it, Cedric? Yes, Mom. He's going to get some other fellas, too, and they're all going to join the searching party. Well, good for them. He said they'd be right over in just a couple of minutes as soon as he could get here. I know, I know we'll find Elizabeth and little Pearl. <laughs> Hurry up now, Cedric. Help me get these vittles packed. I reckon we ought to have another sack full, too, if them other fellas is going along. Yes, Mom. What do you want me to fill the sack with? Oh, just anything you see there on the shelves that's good to eat. Crackers and canned goods and pickles and cookies. Put in some of them fancy cookies for little Pearl. She just loves them. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I believe that's our ring. Yes, ma'am. I love them, too. Hello? Y'all, them down stores closed today, I think. Huh? Oh, hello, Miss Blevins. Yes, ma'am, we're closed because we're going on a searching party to find Elizabeth. Yes, ma'am, up in the mountains. Why, yes, we'd be proud to have him come along. Well, have him meet the others out in front of the store right away, then. All right, Miss Blevins. Goodbye. Don't get you hear that, Cedric. Mr. Blevins is coming along. He's going to get some other fellers, too. Well, I reckon we ought to have another sack of vittles then, oughtn't we? Yeah, yeah, better fill up another, Cedric. I believe I better hang up that store clothes sign, too. Let's see now, where is that thing? Why don't you keep it in the same place all the time? That's what Mama tells me to do with everything. Well, I do, Cedric. I always keep it in the same place. I just never can recollect where that place is. Wait a minute. Here it is. I got it. Morning, Abner. Uh, Oh, morning, Lom. I was just fixing to put up the store clothes sign. Store clothes sign? Yeah, we'll have to close up till we get back from a searching party. Searching party? Oh, me. I hope we find Elizabeth and little Pearl awful quick, Lom. I hate to think of them up there in them mountains all by themselves. Here's another sack of vittles all packed, Mr. Abner. Yeah, well, good, Cedric. Uh, now go out in front and keep an eye open for your pop on them other fellers. Yes, Mom. Tell them we'll be ready in just a few minutes. Wait a minute, Abner. What other fellers are you talking about? Oh, uh, Caleb Wee Hunt and Mr. Blevins, my and I, half the fellers in town, they're all joining with the searching party. You don't care, do you? Of course not. Now, Granny's, we're going up in the hills to look for Elizabeth. The more fellas we can get, the better. Why, sure, sure. How soon are we going to start? Why, just as soon as we can. The fellas will be getting here any minute now. We've got the vittles all packed in them gunny sacks there. Oh, yeah, that's good. But wait a minute. I believe we ought to take along more food than that, Abner. We had, huh? Yeah, no telling how long we might be up there searching. No, no. Might take a couple of days. We don't know. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Yeah. And we'll need some food for Elizabeth and little Pearl, too. Oh, yeah. They'll be mighty nice starved to death by the time we find them. Yeah, bless their heart. More than likely, all they've had for the last few days is them wild berries and roots and one thing or another. Oh, my goodness. Poor Elizabeth. Poor little Pearl. Well, now, don't start feeling sorrowful, Abner. This is the time for action. You pack up about three times that much vittles, and I'll see if I can find us a tent. A tent? Yeah, we'll pitch a tent up there at Clearwater Creek. That'll be a good place to camp. You reckon Elizabeth's around there summer? No, no, but that's a good place to camp. We can use that for our base. And the fishing's good 
along in there, too, in case our food don't hold out. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, Grandpappy Spears has got a good tent. I know he'll let us have it long. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, we get that from him. That's a good idea. They're here, Mr. Edgar. They're here. Well, good for them. Uh, here, Cedric, you start toting these sacks out there and tell them to load them on the horses some way. Wait a minute. I believe I got a better idea. Huh? We'll never be able to tote all this food on horseback, Abner. We won't, huh? Uh, we'll have to get a truck for it. Cedric, go out and tell them fellas to go on ahead, and we'll catch up with them later in the truck. Yes, Mom? Uh, tell them to head for Clearwater Creek, Cedric, and tell them to hurry. Clearwater Creek? Is yeah. where we're going? Yeah, that's the place right there. All right, I'll tell them. Uh, whose truck can we get, Mom? How, how about the, the Macmillan boys? Yeah, yeah, that's big enough to haul the tent and all the other stuff we'll need. Yeah, we, we don't want to forget them binoculars, neither. Binoculars? Yeah, Cedric brought in three of them here a while ago, like you told him to do. They're sitting there in that box on the counter. Well, we can't take them, Abner. Them are for the Navy. The Navy? Yeah. All right, doggies, is the Navy joining our searching party, too? No, no, of course they ain't. Huh? The Navy's got a little searching party of its own to take care of. They've got to find enemy airplanes and submarines and such as that. Submarines? For the land sakes, has somebody saw Elizabeth in a submarine? Well, no, of course not. Well, I was going to say, I don't see how a submarine ever get up there in them mountains. Them creeks is too shallow for anything as big as a submarine, Lom. I can tell them that right now. The submarines thereafter are out in the ocean, Abner. The ocean? Well, now, how in the world did Elizabeth get clean out there? Abner, this ain't got nothing to do with Elizabeth. Huh? The Navy needs these binoculars to spot submarines before they can get a chance to sink our merchant ships and all such as that. Both the Navy fellers on ships and on shore patrol needs them. Well, why do they need these here long? Can't they buy their own binoculars? No, they can't. Huh? They've already got all the binoculars there is in all the stores in the country, and they still need a heap more of them. Well, why don't the factories just make up a big batch of them then? They can't do that neither, because the factories is all changed over to where they're making other stuff for the give them in. Uh-huh. So you see, there's just one place where the Navy can get binoculars now, and that's from the citizens of the United States. Oh, uh huh. So everybody's got to pitch in and send their binoculars to the Navy. They need them bad, and they need them right away, too. Well, I reckon we ought to send these in to them, then. Well, the colors is on their way, heading up for the creek. Well. Well, good. Well, we better get going ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll call Mr. Macmillan about borrowing his truck, and, Cedric, you can go over to Grandpappy Spears and get that tent. What tent? Well, a uh, tent we want to borrow from him, Cedric. Just tell him you want to borrow his tent. He'll know which one you're talking about. Yes, Mom. Uh, wait a minute, though, Cedric. We can pick that up after we get the truck. Uh, you better help Abner finish packing the vittles. Yes, Mom. Boy, this is sort of fun, ain't it? Mom, I still think we ought to use them binoculars ourselves. Now, just forget that, Abner, because them are for the Navy. I don't believe you realize how important a thing it is for the government to get them binoculars. Well, getting Elizabeth back is important, too. Of course it is. I know just how you feel, Abner, but anything that'll help win the war is more important right now than Elizabeth or you or me or any one human. Yeah. Well, come on now. we got to hurry up and get started. Well, wait, the way went now, Lum. Uh, which way are we going now? Are we going up in the mountains or to the ocean? To the ocean? Oh, for goodness sakes, Abner. Well, where was it that you heard Elizabeth was at? I never heard she was at no place. You never? Well, uh, uh, why did you get up a searching party then? Me? I never got it up. You was the one that done that. Why, no, Lum. The first I heard about it was when Cedric come in here a while ago with them binoculars and... Let's see now. Uh oh. You know what I've done? Don't try to tell me. I know exactly what you've done. Huh? Cedric, uh, go get in your car and try to head them fellers off. Tell them the whole thing was a mistake. <laughs> Granny's, Abner, I believe that's our ring. I dog is Lum, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, jot them down, store. This is Lum and Abner. No? 
Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, one more day has rolled around with no news about Abner's missing wife and daughter. The old fellows have checked the railroad and bus stations at the county seat. They've consulted the police. In fact, they've followed every clue they've been able to dig up. But nowhere can they find any information about Elizabeth and Little Pearl. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Lum is just entering. Listen. Abner! Hey, Abner, looky here. Huh? It's a letter for you. A letter? Yeah, I just now picked it up at the post well, office. <laughs> I don't get Who's it for? I just told you it's for you. Uh, oh, I mean, uh, uh, who, who's it from? Well, I reckon it's from your brother-in-law, Ed. The postmark says Texas, and it ain't Elizabeth writing. Texas? I right, don't get that's him all right. Well, hurry up, Lump. Open up. Read it to me. Read well, it, Well, here, you read it. It's your letter, not mine. Oh, well, I can't read at a time like this. Go ahead, now read it for me, Lump, yeah. please. I'll read it for you. Yeah, go ahead, read it, read it. <laughs> now I'll find out where Elizabeth's at. Yeah, I'm going to tell her to come right back home. Fact says I believe I'll do it right now. Where's some writing paper? I'm going to answer that letter. Well, wait a minute. Wait till you hear the letter before you answer it. You don't know what it says yet. Yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Yeah, oh, hurry up, read it, Lum. Read it. Well, that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, you go ahead, go, 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 go. Dear Abner. Yeah. Uh huh. That's how it starts out. Dear Abner. Oh, well, that's it, all right. That's the way he always starts out. <laughs> I start mine different to him, though. I say, dear Ed. That's mm -hmm. what I say. Dear Abner, received your letter telling us that Elizabeth and Little Pearl was coming here to visit us. Well. However, we must have misunderstood your letter because so far they have not arrived. Not arrived? Why, well, they've had plenty of time to get there. We have met Ever Train for the last three days but have not saw them. Well, he don't have to meet Ever Train. Just the passengers will be enough. I don't think they're going on a freight. Please write and tell us when they will be here. But, Lump, do you reckon something could have happened to them on their way down there? Well, no, not necessary. More than likely went Summer's Hills, that's all. Summer's Hills? Why, sure. There's lots of other places they could have went to, you know. Where? Well, I don't know. It's what we got to find out. Oh. You oughtn't have told Ed that Elizabeth and Pearl was definitely coming to his place, Abner. Well, that's where Elizabeth always goes again. She wants to make a trip summer's long. I've told you a thousand or a hundred times before you oughtn't to jump at conclusions that way, Abner. Yeah, I know. You're going to have your brother-in-law going down to the depot meeting every train that comes into Texas from now on. He'll more than likely have to give up his job to do it, and then he'll go broke, and pretty soon his whole family will starve to death. Oh. Well, I never meant to do all that. Well, don't worry. It won't go that far, I don't think. Well, huh? I'm just giving you an example to show you what this conclusion jumping of yours can lead to. Yeah. Here, let me finish reading your letter. Oh, is there some more to it? Yeah. This might give us more information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, where was I at? Oh, yeah. Uh, we are all fine here. I went hog wild the other day. And for Amy's birthday, That's I... That's his warmer, Amy. Uh-huh. And for Amy's birthday, I bought her a second-hand washing machine. <laughs> yeah, he always was wonderful for fancy gadgets. <laughs> Amy likes it just fine. Well... Opal is That's doing... his oldest daughter, Opal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Opal is doing canteen work for the Army boys and likes it just fine. Well, bless her heart. Bless her little heart. Aunt Ione has went to work in a defense plant near here as a riveter. Riveter? Mm. Yeah. She says she likes it just fine. Ah. Uh -huh. Her birthday is next week, so if you think of it, you might send her a nice pair of overhauls. What size? It don't say. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, must close now. Everything here is just fine. Everything's fine, ain't it? Well, that's fine. Yeah, everything's always fine with Ed. Never had a sad day in his life, I don't reckon. Write soon and tell us when to expect Elizabeth and Pearl. Wish you could come along with them, but know you have to stay there and keep the old nose to the grindstone. Ha, ha. What are you laughing about, Mom? Ed laughed. Oh. I mean, he put it in a letter. Oh, he Says. thinks he said something funny there. Oh. <laughs> He's a joshing sort of a fella. <laughs> So it says ha ha right here. He yeah. must have thought it's funny. Oh, that's him. He always laughs at his own jokes, you know. <laughs> Hope everything there is just fine. Yours truly, Ed. Hmm. Well, Ed writes a nice letter, Abner. Yeah, but he never told me where Elizabeth is, though. Well, at least we know now that she ain't there. No. So that illuminates your brother-in-law's place. And means we got to start looking everywhere else we can think of. Well, I don't know no place else to start well, looking. I do know. Else. Whose car is that out there? Huh. Over there across the street. Oh, oh. I've never seen that car around Pine Ridge before. Huh. Don't believe I have neither. It's stopping out there. 
our dog is waiting a minute. She you don't recognize Elizabeth, and she's went and bought herself an automobile, do you, Lum? Of course not. Where would she get the money to buy something like that? Well, maybe she earned it, Summers. I don't know. She might be a realtor like Anna Owen. Maybe Anna Owen got her in that defense plant down there in Texas. Oh, she couldn't have did that. She ain't even got her priorities. Man, you never can tell, though. I expect I better get Elizabeth a pair of them overhauls, too, while I'm doing it. Let's see, I believe she'd take about, oh, 30, 34 ought to fit her just about right. Wait a minute, Dad. Yeah. Elizabeth couldn't be working in no defense plant in Texas because she ain't even in Texas. We know that for sure. Yeah, that's right. All right, doggies, look there. Ain't that a woman getting out of the car there? Yeah, it is. Yeah, see, what did I tell you? What did well, I tell wait you? wait a minute, though, Abner. That ain't Elizabeth. Oh, yes, it Look is. Look how she's dressed. Huh? Elizabeth ain't got no clothes like that, them furs and all. Well, more like that, she, she might have bought herself some new ones, Ann Long. I, I know it's Elizabeth's coming back short of work. She's coming back, Long. Abner, <laughs> now, don't get yourself to work oh, there, because yeah. that ain't Elizabeth. Yes, it is. Yes, I, it I can is. see better than you can, and that ain't her. Just take a good look out there now. Yes. I know you, you know... I don't believe that does much look like her, Well, Mom. of course not. Look there, she's carrying a youngin in her arms. Oh, she is, ain't she? <laughs> well, I know that ain't little Pearl she's carrying, because she's a heap bigger than that. Fact is, she can come closer to carrying Elizabeth than Elizabeth can to carrying her. Find out, Amy. Here she comes. Oh, yeah. Now, try to recollect your manners now and act polite. Yeah. Say how to do, ma'am, and please excuse me, please, Mom, and all What have I did? Well, if you do do something. Oh, oh, oh. I'll be glad. I'll be glad. Well, how do you do, Mom? How do you do, ma'am? Hello. Goodness, I've had a hard time finding your place. Oh, was you looking for us, Mom? You are Mr. Edwards and Mr. Peabody, aren't you? Hey, Elizabeth never sent you, did she? I beg your pardon? Never mind him, miss. Uh, what was you wanted to see us about? Why, I... I want to send a... No, no, darling, don't cry. Mama's right here with you. Sure, cute little fella you got there. Yeah. It's been so fussy today. It's awfully hard traveling with the baby. Yeah, I reckon it is. Well, what I wanted was... was to send a money order. Money order? Yes, this... This is the post office, isn't it? Oh, no, Mom. The post office is across the street there. Get over in Dick Carlson's store. He runs it. Oh, dear, I can't seem to get anything right today. It's... Across the street, you say? Yes, ma'am. Well, I guess I'd better go over and... Oh, say, would... Uh, would you do me a favor? Well, sure. I'd be proud to do anything we can, ma'am. Well, I, I hate to ask you this, but... Would you mind watching the baby for me? It'll just take me a second to get the money order. Why, well, we'd be more than glad to do that for Why, you. Why, sure, yeah. <laughs> Let me take the little fella. <laughs> Getting so heavy, I can hardly carry him anymore. <laughs> Come here, you little rat. Come here to your uncle Long. Um. <laughs> now, don't start that. He won't cry much. I'll, I'll be right back. Well, just take your time. He'll be all right with us. You, you will take good care of him. Oh, sure. Don't you worry now. We know all about baby. Don't worry a minute. <laughs> you better let me hold him, Mama. No more about this. Man. No, no, no. no. Can make him stop crying, no longer. Can handle him all right. Ain't a little dark. Yes, I can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at that, Abby. Smiling at you. You don't even know how to hold him. Look like you got a sack of potatoes there. You're getting ready to weigh up. Oh, they cut down the old pine tree. And they... Oh, what kind of songs do you sing about? Why, you know so much about them. Go ahead. And they hold it away to the To make a coffee and a pine for that sweetheart. Oh, look at him, Abner. Look at him. He's laughing now. He's just hysterical, that's all. Here, now, let me take him home. Oh, now, he likes me. Oh, they cut down the old pine tree. And they hauled it away to the mill. He loved that. Look at him. Look at him. They're going to drop it now if you ain't careful now. You make a coffee and a pine for that sweetheart of mine. Oh, too good, man. Uh Uh-oh. What's the matter? Here. You want to hold him? Why, sure. Yeah, give him here. (laughs) Yeah, come here, little fella. I know how to hold you. Come here. (laughs) Oh, they cut down the old pine. Uh Uh-oh. Why didn't you tell me, Long? You know more about babies than me. Well, here, now, you take him back. Look at him. He's starting to cry again. He likes you better than me. No, no, now, you keep him. Well, I don't know what to do. Well, oh, wait a minute. I'll call his mom over at Dick Hunter's and tell her to hurry back. Yeah, that's the thing to do. Tell her to hurry, though, Long. I will. Yeah, be quiet now. Be quiet now, Yeah, be quiet now. 
Be quiet. Sing a song for him, Oh, they cut down the old pine tree. Hello? And they hold it away. Hello? Uh, just a minute, Abner. Uh, quiet down a little. Uh, oh. This is Mom. Oh, hey, Dick, did I speak to that young lady over there, the one that's getting the money order? Uh, uh oh, are, are you sure, Dick? Tell her to hurry now. Yeah, that's the one. That's what she was wearing. You seen her do what? Look, she couldn't have her car parked right over there across the street. Oh, wait a minute. Abner, look across the street there. Uh -huh. The car's gone. Gone? Yeah, Dick said he's seen her heading out of town. Oh, my goodness. Uh, hello, Dick. I got to hang up now because me and Abner just had a baby. I, I mean, it, that woman must have went right off and left him. Forgot it. I believe that's our ring. I know it, Lum. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, Pine Ridge is still minus two of its citizens, Elizabeth and Little Pearl, but it has now acquired a new citizen, at least temporarily. A young woman appeared at the Jotham Down store and left her baby with Lum and Abner while she went to the post office to buy a money order. However, she never went to the post office, nor did she return for her baby, and so far, no trace of her has been found. As we look in on the little community today, we find Abner in the Jotham Down store and library. Lum has just entered. Listen. Yeah, morning, Lum. Uh, whereabouts is a baby? Oh, let me sit down here. I'm more to a frazzle. Oh. He? More to a frazzle. Well, uh, where's the baby at? Oh, I left him over to the place there. By himself? No, no, I got Mousy to come over and stay with him. Mousy? Now, what does he know about taking care of baby? Well, I just give him instructions what to do. Just takes a little common sense, that's all. Huh. Women folks always make a lot of fuss over taking care of babies, but that's just a lot of husk and shuckings. Uh, how'd you get along with him last night? Oh, fine, fine, Dan. You weren't nothing to it. Well, uh, what you so wore up for, then? You look like you never had a wink of sleep. Well, I did get up once or twice with him. Just routine stuff, though. Just checking up on him and all. Uh-huh. He cried a little bit long about 10 o'clock, and I got up to see what was wrong with him. <laughs> What was wrong with him? Well, I never did find out. Hmm. I got him right back to sleep, though, in an hour or two. Maybe it's three, I don't recollect. You mean he cried for three hours? Well, not study. He'd let up once in a while. Especially when I'd swing him up over my head. Was you swinging him around in the air in the middle of the night? Well, he seemed to like it. My arms got awful tired, though, I can tell you that. I do know. Did he ever get back to sleep? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. He went to sleep all right. I don't know, but I, I believe I must have some magic touch with youngins. Huh. He went right to sleep after a while. Of course, a funny thing happened then. Funny thing? Yeah, I hate to tell it on myself. <laughs> when he finally went to sleep, he was so doggone quiet that I got to worrying about him, so I got up to see why he wasn't making more noise, and then that woke him up, and he started crying all over again. He did? All right, dog is long now. You're going to ruin that baby. No, I ain't. It's natural for babies to cry. Besides, he never cried much the second time, just a couple of hours or so. couple of hours? Yeah, I got him back to sleep again. I sat up in my rocking chair and rocked him the rest of the night. For the land sakes, Lom, well, that ain't no way to do with a baby. You're going to spoil him that way. Now, you better let him, uh, me take him home with me tonight. No, no, no. He's sort of used to it over at my place for now. Ain't good to drag young'uns all over the country to a lot of different places. Besides, Elizabeth ain't showed up yet to take care of him. Well, I can do it. I do it. He's better than you are doing. I can tell you that right now. No, you couldn't, Abby. Yes, you still could. got them old-timey ideas about raising young. Wait a minute. I believe that's our ring. Yeah, my ideas might be old-timey, but they don't keep a young and crying all night long. I'll tell you that. Hello, Jotham Down Store Library and Publishing Company. L. Edwards talking. I just cried for a Oh, hello, Mousy. What's the trouble? Rock him all night. Yes, yeah, huh? Well, maybe he's a little hungry. Yeah, better give him some more milk. 
Tell him to warm it up first, Mom. Warm it up first, Mousy. Uh Oh, I don't know, about a quart, I reckon. That's way too much, Long. Well, make that a pint, Mousy. That's still too much. Well, give him as much as he wants and see how that works, Mousy. Yeah, call me back and let me know. All right, Mousy. Goodbye. Dog, as long you don't even know how you're supposed to feed him. Well, I hate to see the little fella starve to death. Wouldn't hurt to fatten him up a little. He's fat enough, just like he is. I recollect when little Pearl was about his age, he never weighed no more than no Oh, wonderful world. Oh, howdy, Sandy. Oh, hello, Mr. Abner, Mr. Lum. Well, I've got some news for you, Mr. Uncle Henry Lunsford told me about it. Uncle Henry, the town marshal? Yes, Mom. Oh, oh. Yeah, I told Uncle Henry to check up on that woman and left the baby at her. Oh. Uh, what did he find out, Cedric? Well, he said to tell you he ain't found out nothing so far. Nobody knows nothing. Well, didn't nobody get the license number on her car or see what state it was from or nothing? No, Mom. Nobody knows nothing, he said. Well, no, he's long as he's curious, you know what? First, Elizabeth and little Pearl runs off. We don't hear a single word from them, and... Now this woman disappears and leaves a little young'un in our store. We don't know where she went or nothing. Yeah, it does look mighty cute, you don't know. Yes, sir. Reckon what a woman like her'd want to run off and leave a little baby for her. Special such a cute one. Well, maybe she's just poor and couldn't afford to take care of it no more. Well, that woman never looked poor, though. She's wearing nice clothes and driving her own car. Yeah. No, that couldn't have been it. No, I reckon not. No. There's something mysterious there, and I aim to find out what it is, too. I wish we could. First thing we got to do is find out who that woman is. Yeah, yeah. She sure likes to ask questions, don't she? Likes to ask questions. What do you mean by that, Sidney? Well, the other day she... You touch your ring there? Uh, oh, yeah. Just a minute, I'll get you. Yeah. Hello, John. I'm down store in library. Lum Edwards talking. Huh? Oh, what is it now, see? Wouldn't work, huh? Is he still crying? Yeah. What's that, Mousy? Well, I, I'd try something else this time. Give him some orange juice and tomato juice and anything else you see there. Well, don't give him too much, Long. There's some buttermilk there, Mousy. Crumble a little uh, cornbread up in it. Corn, too, goodness. Yeah, try that, Mousy, and if it don't work, call me back. All right, Mousy, goodbye. All right, dog as long. Now, you're going to feed him too much stuff. No, I ain't. Little feller's natural hungry and... Got to have a lot to fill him up. Huh. Then he gets his stomach full, he'll stop that crying. Well, crying. maybe that ain't why he's crying on. Maybe it's something else. Listen, Abner, I know what I'm doing. You just leave him up to me. Uh, what was you saying, Cedric? Um, Mom, what did you start to tell us about that woman asking questions? Oh, that. Uh, well, the other day she seen me crossing the road and stopped me and asked me a lot of questions, that's all. Well, what what were some of the questions, Cedric? Oh, I forget most of them now. Mostly she asked me about you fellas, I think. Us fellers. Yes, Mom. If he's making any money and if he's kind and gentle and well, I don't know what all. Hmm. Want to know if he's making money, huh? Dog, as long as you don't reckon she's one of them, our, what do you call them, them our blackmailers? No, I don't believe so, Edna. She never looked like that kind. No, nice looking woman. In fact, she looked like an awful nice lady. Yeah. Her voice sounded awful mysterious now that I think about it. Well, I believe it did anyway. Oh, you're just imagining that, Edna. Did... You say she wanted to know if we was kind and gentle, Cedric? Yes, Mom, and generous, and where about you lived at, and how you lived, and if you helped other folks, and a bunch of other stuff. Well. Well, yes. That sort of looks like she is definite aiming on leaving the baby with us when she come in here, don't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she wouldn't ever have bothered to find out all that stuff about her. Why, no. She asked where about your store was at, too, and, and where the post office was at. Recollect that now. Did she ask that, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Well, that shows she ain't a very smart woman right there, Lom, because she got that all mixed up when she come in here. She thought this was a no, post office. No, she didn't, Abner. I see through the whole thing now. She just used that as an excuse to get us to hold the baby for her. She did, huh? Well, she said she wanted to get a money order, but Dick said he never sold her none. She never even asked for one. No, I know that. No, no, no. She just jumped in her car and got out of town as fast as she could. Yes. Yeah. Dick seen her leave. But, of course, he never knowed nothing about the baby or he could have run out there and stopped her. Wait a minute, I... Oh, but I wish he had a stopped her. I know that. Hello, John. I'm down. Oh, is that you again, Mousy? Mom, taking care of the poor little fella. Orange juice and tomato juice never work neither, huh? Is he crying as loud as ever? Poor little fella. Huh. Well, maybe he needs some solid food. Uh -oh. uh, look in the ice box, Mousy, and you'll find some pancakes left over from breakfast. Give him a couple or three of them. Now, Lon, don't give him pancakes. And put some sorghum molasses on them. 
That'll make them taste good. Lom, you're going to kill him, sure as a word. Uh, what is in the kitchen safe there, Mousy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, give him one of them fried eggs and a cold pork chop. Oh, my. Yeah, goodness. see how that works, Mousy, and then call me back. All right, Mousy. Goodbye. You don't realize what you're doing now, Lom. I know what I'm doing. He needs that solid food. I know I'd be crying, too, if all I got to eat was milk and orange juice. Oh, no. Uh, what else did she ask you, Cedric? Oh, I don't recollect nothing else, I don't believe. Well, anyways, uh, we know now that it wasn't no accident that she left the baby with us. No. We know she done it on a purpose. But what that purpose is, I can't figure out. Well, now, what are we going to do about the baby, Long? Well, there's just one thing to do, and that's turn him over to the police. Police? Well, he ain't stole nothing, has he? Oh, this might be a... Kidnapping case for all we know. Oh, he's too little to kidnap that woman, Long. I think we'll wait another day before we do it, though. We'll wait till tomorrow, and then if the woman ain't come back, why, we'll carry the baby into the county seat. Yeah, if he lasts that long, the way you're taking care of him. Listen, Amber, don't you worry about what I'm doing. I'm sort of a natural-born expert. Well, if anything happens, just recollect that well, I was the one. Just a minute, that's our ring. Oh, my. Hello, John. Oh, hello, Mousy. I hate to hear this. He did, huh? <laughs> well, what all did you give him? Poor little fella. Uh, oh, my. The pork chop done it, huh? Oh, me. Oh, my goodness. Well, was there plenty of sorghum on it? Uh, well, much obliged for letting me know right away, Mousy. Yeah, I'll drop over there at lunchtime. All right, Mousy. Goodbye. Is he awful sick, Lom? Is he having convulsions or anything? No, no, he's fine. Fine? Yeah. One pancake and one pork chop, and he stopped crying. Oh. Now he's as happy as a kitten. Now she says he crawled over under the stove and went sound asleep. I doggies, that's going too far. Feeding a young and uh, cold pork chops and pancakes and then letting him crawl under the stove to sleep. Now what would that woman think of you treating her baby that way, Long? Baby? I ain't talking about the baby. Huh? He's been sound asleep all morning. It's that little pup I got for him to play with that's giving Mousy the trouble. <laughs> I believe that's our ring. I had no good llama. I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Downstore. This is Lama and Abner. No? Let's see what's going on down in Pine Ridge. Well, another day has passed and nothing has been learned about the young woman who left her baby in Lum and Abner's care and then disappeared. The old fellows have decided that if she does not return today, they are going to take the baby to the county seat and place him in charge of the police. As we look in on the little community today, it is late in the day and the old fellows are getting ready for their trip to the county seat. Listen. Well, it's my night closing time, Abner. I reckon that woman ain't coming back to get her baby. No, I... I cannot. Guess we better bundle the little fella up and carry him into the county seat. Let the police figure out what to do about him. Yeah, I suppose so. Maybe we ought to wait another five minutes so long, just in case he does turn up. Now, Abner, we both agree that if that woman ever showed up by closing time, we'd carry the baby into the county seat and turn him over to the police. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Oh, well, I reckon another five minutes wouldn't hurt nothing. No, no, no. Kind of hate to wake him up right now, anyway. Yeah. It's taking us so long to get him to sleep and all. Oh, yeah, we oughtn't to wake him up right now. That, that'd that be bad for him, I know it would. Yeah. i better go back in the feed room and see how he's getting along. Well, I'll go back on. You sit down and rest now. You've been working awful hard today. No, 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 I'll, I'll go back. Well, you've been back there a mite now all day, Lum. It's my turn now. Well, he's used to me by now, Abner. We don't want to upset him. I won't upset him. I know more about babies than you do now, Not Lum. Not so loud, Abner. Huh? You don't want to wake him up, do you? Oh, I won't wake him up. I know how to handle him. Well, let's not argue about it. No. Why don't you call up Cedric and tell him to bring his car on over here because we're just about ready to get started now. Well, are you sure we want to start yet? We, we want to give that woman plenty of time to get back if she's coming back, Mom. Well, I don't reckon she is, Abner. She'd be here by now if she's aiming on coming back for her young. Better call Cedric. Take him a couple of minutes for him to get over here anyway. Yeah, all right. What's a ring over at their place? 
You know what it is. Huh? It's been the same for the last 30 years. Oh, yeah, well, uh, I, I thought maybe they'd changed it today or something, I think. No, oh, you stalling around, Abner. We may just as well get this over with. Sort of hate to see the little fella go myself. But don't know what else to do. We can't take care of him. Elizabeth had just come back. Why she could look at him? Uh, hello, uh, Cedric. Well, I reckon you can come over in your car and get us now. Uh huh. Of course, now if you've got anything else to do and can't make no, it. No, no, Abner. Don't tell him that. We better get the baby to the proper authorities. Yeah, well, all right, Cedric. I reckon that'll have to be all right then. Goodbye. Huh? A wonderful world. Dad, blame it. What's the matter? Why, he says he can come right over. Well, that's what we want him to do. Yeah. Ain't no use fooling ourselves, Abner. We can't keep no baby. In the first place, he don't belong to us. Well, his mama went off and left him here with us so long. Yeah, but she'll want him back. Don't worry about that. And if she don't want him back, I bound you there's somebody that does. Oh, yeah, as cute as he is. This whole thing is awful curious to me, Abner. And there ain't no telling what trouble we might be getting ourselves into by keeping that young un. Yeah, it does seem sort of cute here, all right. Might be a big ring of crooks of some kind. Me and you'd wind up in a penitentiary. Oh, my goodness. And even if that didn't happen, me and you ain't no feller to be bringing up a little tot like him. Well, I know how to bring him up, Long. Well, it ain't that so much. I'm a natural-born expert on babies myself. But the point is, me and you just ain't got the time. Oh. We got the store here to run. I've got my publishing business to look after. Yeah. I ain't printed a single thing since the baby got here. Yeah, well, he does take a heap of time, all right. And he's a lot of bother around the store here, too. Look at all the damage he's done just crawling around here today. Knocked over them cans of sorghum molasses and spilled them all over the floor and tipped over a box of soda crackers and he got them in the molasses. Yeah, well, of course, he never meant to do that, though. Well, no, naturally never, but he done it just the same. Yeah. And he gets to crying, and we can't hardly hear what anybody's saying on the telephone or nothing. Well, well, he's a bother, all right, yeah. And when we ain't trying to study up some way to get him to stop crying, we're trying to figure out what's best to feed him. Yeah, he's a problem. Yeah, yeah. And he's liable to get into that ant poison or something like that. Oh, my goodness. And then he'd get sick, and we wouldn't know what to do for him. Be our fault, too, for letting him crawl around the store. Yeah, well, it just ain't no sense in taking on more trouble for ourselves. And for him, I reckon. And when folks comes in here, they want to stand there and play with the baby, and they get so interested in him, they forget to buy any groceries. Yeah, well, he's going to run our business. We ain't careful. It's just about what he'll do, yeah. No, no, Abner, there just ain't no two ways about it. we got to get shut of him. And the quicker we do it, the better off we'll be. Yeah. When we get attached to him. Well, I reckon you're right, Mom. I guess that's a thing to do all right. Just get shut of him. I hate to think about it, but I guess that's a thing to do. Well... That's what we're going to do, then. It's the only sensible thing to do. My, of course it is. Of course it is. My dog is look out there, Long. Huh? There's Cedric driving up in his car out there. And he didn't ever waste no time, did he? Mm. Well, I'm glad he never. Now we can get going. He, you want me to go get the baby ready for the trip? Uh, no, I, I'll do it. Well, hurry up, then. Now we don't want to get ourselves in a penitentiary. Hurry up, Long. Get going. Yeah, I will. Just a second. Well, Cedric's out there waiting. I know that. I can see him. Well, why don't you hurry up, then? Uh, Abner, you run out and tell Cedric to wait a few minutes. There's a couple of things i got to take care of first. What things? Oh, just different stuff. Huh? All those things a feller's got to do before he makes a trip this way. Like what, for instance? Oh, like, uh... Well, I've got to shine my shoes, for one thing. Shine your shoes? I always shine my shoes before I go to the county seat. Why, law matters, I never hear to such a thing in my whole life. I never once seen you shine your shoes before you went into the county seat, and you know well, it. Well, I'm starting this week. It's a good idea to keep looking neat that way. Yes, it's huh? good for business reasons. You ought to start shining your shoes, too, Abner. Well, I'll shine my shoes, but I ain't got time to do it right now, though. we got to get in the county seat. Wonderful world. Oh, come on in, Cedric. Oh. Ain't you fellas ready yet? Uh, well, uh, well, we're just about ready, Cedric. Uh, soon as Long gets the baby fixed up, why, then we'll be ready. Yeah, we may have to wait a little bit, Cedric. You ain't no big rash, are you? No, Mom, I reckon not. You said for me to come right on over, though. Yeah, well, we was in a hurry at that time, Cedric, but, uh, 
Well, Lon's got to get him ready, you know, for the trip and all such as that. See, the baby's asleep right now, Cedric, and it's awful bad thing to take a sleeping baby in a car. Awful bad thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Lon, if he's sleeping, we... Wait a minute, wait a minute. You hear that? Huh? He's awake. Can't you hear him crying? I can't hear nothing. Huh? That's just your imagination again, then. No, it ain't my imagination either, Lon. I can hear him, too, Mr. Lon. Why, sure. You can Yes, Mom, I can hear him good. Yeah, I reckon you better get him while he's awake, Lum. We get him to the county seat quick as we can before he goes to sleep again. Yeah, yeah, I reckon I better. I'll go and get him. Yeah, hurry up now. Yeah, I will. <laughs> you got enough gas in your car and everything, Cedric? Yes, Mom. Got her plumb full. Yeah, that's the time. We'll pay you for the gasoline you use going in there and back. Well, I got it marked down here on a piece of paper in my pocket somewhere. Well, yeah, we'll take care of it. I ain't got the money right now, but we'll pay you as soon as we get back. Don't worry about that. The tars ain't much good, though. Huh? I say my tars ain't much good. Ain't, huh? I, I give my good ones to the gear meant for the rubber drive. Oh. Well, uh, they're good enough to get us in there and back, though, ain't they? Oh, yes, Mom. If we're lucky that we will I believe. Maybe. They might uh-huh. Uh, have you heard anything about Elizabeth or Little Pearl yet, Mr. Abner? Oh, no, Cedric. No, I ain't heard a word. Not a single solitary word. Hmm. Just expect to hearing from them every day, but I was down the post office a while ago. No mail yet. Just making a Norris wreck out of me. Norris wreck, what it's doing. My warmer and my young and gone, Cedric. Well, it's awful lonesome over at your place with them gone, too, ain't it? Oh, it's worse than that. I can't even stand to stay over there no more. Well, fact is, I've moved in with Grandpappy Spears, temporary. Of course, that Grandpap, he wants to argue all the time, but he's better than going back to that empty house. Yes, Mom, I reckon it is. Reckon. One night I went home, it's so quiet there, I could just might not hear the mice talking to one. Well, <laughs> yeah, there's that little fella. Hello there. Hello, hello. Now, what's him crying for, huh? What's him it's crying no for? no use, Abner. You won't stop crying. Well, and it's an awful bad thing to take a crying baby in a car. Awful bad thing to do. Yes, huh? Oh, yeah. I just wouldn't want to take the chance. Well, you know best, Lum. Well, why is that such a bad thing to do, Mr. Lum? Oh, it... Why, well, uh... It causes, uh... Well, you wouldn't understand about such things, Cedric. No, no, Cedric, you wouldn't understand. I, I believe Lum's right. Ought to take a chance. No, I reckon we can't make the trip after all, Cedric. Well, I got the car already. It won't take long to get him in there. Yeah, yeah, we know, Cedric. If he'd stop crying, why, well, then we could go. But it just don't look like he ever will, a poor little thing. Poor little thing. There. Well, he stopped now. Huh. Well, I reckon we can go, can't we? Huh? Uh, he'll start up again in just a second. I know he will. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, look at there. He's smiling and laughing. <laughs> oh, boy. Hello there, little feller. <laughs> I sort of believe he likes me. <laughs> I, I think he's looking right at me when he started smiling then. Hello, fella. Come on, let's get started. Yeah. Uh, reckon we better. Come on, Lum. Yeah, all right. I'm coming. <laughs> you want me to lock the door for you, Mr. Lum? Uh, I guess so, Cedric. Well, I'll do it then. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. What's this here stuck on the screen for? Huh? This envelope here. Is that anything you fellas want to keep? What envelope? This in here. What is it? Says only Mr. Edwards and Mr. Peabody. Important. No, oh, because I never saw that before. Did you put that there long? No, I never put it there. Open it up and see what it says, Cedric. Well, here, Mr. Lum, you better read it. Yeah, read it, Lum, read it. I reckon who's going to stuck that envelope I've never seen nobody do it. What, what does it say, Lum? What is it? What it says, uh, don't turn the baby over to the police. Don't even tell the police about it. Keep the baby and keep your mouth closed. Uh-huh. Heed this warning, and you will live much longer. Sign the Black Pelican. Oh, my goodness. Listen to that, Lum. Yeah. Goodness, that's good news, ain't it? Good news? Why, didn't you hear they threatened our lives? Uh, oh, yeah, but who cares about anything like that? We get to keep the baby, though. Mm-hmm.